Hello, Play the Game family. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. This episode is brought to you by Lone Wolf Paintball. They are an amazing online supplier and have been around since the beginning of the game as Michigan's premier paintball field and paintball supplier since 1987. They are rapidly expanding into the online retail space and supplying everything you need to be the best paintball player you can be. They have got it all. Head over to LoneWolfPaintball.com and shop all of your favorite brands And they also boast amazing customer service and will have this out to you with same day shipping, which is amazing. It's always nice to know that your stuff is on its way immediately so you can start to use it that very next week in a play. Check out their YouTube, Lone Wolf Paintball, and their Instagram, at Lone Wolf PB, and stay up to date with all of their deals and sales. Play the Game Podcast is immensely honored to have them on board, and we cannot wait for you guys to check out LoneWolfPaintball.com and become a part of their community. Today's episode of PTG is brought to you by Transfuse, the amazing premium rapid hydration multiplier and immunity fortifying formula that is scientifically designed to replenish you at the cellular level. And they use all natural ingredients in their products. It is packed full of zinc, vitamin B6, vitamin C, sodium, potassium, and choline. And when you take this product, you are going to feel the difference on and off the field. I know that playing paintball with Transfuse has been a game changer, and it will be for you as well. If you head over to translabs.com, that's T-R-A-N-Z-L-A-B-S.com, and use code PLAYTHEGAME, you will get 10% off. And if you subscribe to a monthly delivery service, you get an additional 10% off. So you can take advantage of a total of 20% off on these amazing products. Also, head over to their Instagram, at transfuse.official, and check them out. And be on the lookout for their new flavors and brain booster nootropics that are coming soon. We absolutely love Transfuse from top to bottom, one of the best companies in the world with the greatest people running it. So head on over and become a part of their community and check them out. This episode is brought to you by the one and only G2 Paintball. If you are in Arizona or on the West Coast and soon to be nationally, be on the lookout for G2 training dates and be sure to sign up. They are a paintball athletics company designed to help you become the best paintball athlete imaginable by running you through all of the different moves and techniques that you need to know and you're going to be implementing on the paintball field. So that way when you get into the situations, the muscle memory is dialed in. You are also going to learn skills. You're going to learn tactics and of course the agility which is training to maximize your performance on and off the field this stuff is used by myself and Marcelo and we're pushing paintball players to become pro or just dominate in your division don't make excuses out there physical fitness is at an all-time high in paintball and you cannot win paintball tournaments unless you are ready to go physically on Sunday when you're dead tired and you're ready to hold up that trophy with your friends and family so you got to be prepared and G2 will help you do that head on over to g2paintball.com also check out their Instagram at g2paintball and give our man Victor Gamboa at Gamboa Limited, that's his Instagram, a follow and support him as well. It's owned and operated by Victor and Rusty and they're doing tremendous things in the sport. We absolutely love G2 and we cannot wait for you to get involved. So have some fun with G2 Paintball. What's going on PTG fam? Thank you guys so much for tuning into the show. This episode, we have Chris Shear from Baltimore Revo on the line. Chris was an amazing uh, conversation, amazing person to sit down and talk to. Just a, a really intelligent individual who has really made a name for himself in the professional division over the last season. Chris has been a uh, professional for almost 10 years on and off and has really burst onto the scene last year. He won Breakout Player of the Year and Dorito Player of the Year with the Iconic Awards. So really awesome to uh, have him on the show, sit down, talk with him uh, about everything that has you know helped him and, and shaped his success. Without further ado... And I hop in the show. That was an insane inside move by Marcelo Margot. Great communication. And the crowd starts chanting Harmon. Great, great shot by all the guys. So Tyler Harmon saved that game. Came out with two wins. Marcelo Margot was on fire. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have Dorito Player of the Year, Chris Shear uh, of Ed, or, Jesus, Edmonton Impact. You guys just <laughs> lost players to Edmonton Impact. I was just watching Bart's show with, uh, with Ryan. I apologize for that. But Baltimore Revo, and you guys have a ton of stuff going on in your camp. You guys are in our bracket, um, and uh, I think a big year ahead. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. Stoked to be on the show. I love PTG. Dude. It's awesome. Dude, we love you. Hell Thank yeah, you dude. for coming on the show, man. And congratulations on the success of the year, man. You've been absolutely killing it out there. Talk to us a little bit about what that means to have won those awards. Those are pretty meaningful awards, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I, we, you know, we touched on this on Go Sports when they did the live and everything, and, and I've talked about it a little bit, but you know, it was definitely surreal to me at first. Um, super stoked. I mean, I worked hard, really hard Hell this yeah. year. Uh, it's, it, it's honestly just a dream come true. As much work as I put in throughout my career and, and you know, finally getting to this point is, is really awesome. Um, when Quinn messaged me, I honestly was, I didn't really believe him at first. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> come on, Quinn, stop messing with me. But uh, no, it's really cool. Um, I definitely- You deserve you know, I, it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, you deserve uh, it. Yeah, I don't consider myself, you know, being the number one Dorito player or, or you know, best breakout player in the year, you know, or any of those kind of accolades, I'm always kind of chasing that, you know, that success. So I don't like mm -hmm. to, you know, to put myself on that pedestal, but it's really cool. It's an honor for sure. And dude, you won two awards in the 2021 season. Not very many people short of this other guy on the screen, Marcelo can say that. <laughs> um, and you know, it was a blue tidal wave. Their dynasty swept a lot of those awards. You also <clears throat> had, um, you know, Columbus LVL was in there, uh, Meter, and uh, Mr. Mark Peter Crescent. Had a great year. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, awesome. But yeah, it was really cool. It's great what Iconic Paintball is doing just for the, for the culture of the game, really, for the fabric of the sport. You need layers like that. You've got to have awards. Um, you've got to have all these extra things, the fantasy paintball, the, the things that really round out and make a sport truly professional. And what you have been doing is playing like a true <clears throat> professional out there, man. You attack the Doritos, which is why you had such an astounding year out there. And the breakout player of the year, I don't see any reason that doesn't go to you because of the amount of work that you put in out there to be sitting where you're at with the accolades that you have. And then, you know, from here on, it's just keeping it pushing, keeping, you know, keeping that determination alive and keep having fun with it. But dude, major, major kudos to you for for what you did in the 2021 season don't definitely don't downplay that <laughs> oh yeah definitely thank yeah. you guys appreciate it Hell yeah, yeah. Awesome. i mean you know tyler makes a good point it's uh those awards are about your body of work in that season right and if you look at the whole mm -hmm. year um as for breakout player of the year you know definitely a player that probably wasn't on a ton of radars but by the end of the season everybody knew your name right because if if anyone had to play against revo it was Watch, De watch the Dorito side. Watch Chris going down the Dorito <laughs> side, especially, man, the Chicago event. And I want to talk to you about that. We'll get into that a little bit later, but I definitely want to talk about uh, that event in particular because you guys were poised to go all the way through and win that. And I think you just kind of ran out of gas, you know, it was just yeah. uh, too much paintball. And that was kind of a byproduct of, of having to play an extra match Sunday morning yeah. because the prelims <laughs> couldn't finish. Like that totally stinks. You know, who knows what you guys could have accomplished there. Um, and Revo's always played Dynasty really well. Like for some reason, it, Revo's a team that has, has been like our Achilles heel in a way. Um, the last few times, I think we've pulled out the win, but the the record I think is in Revo's favor for sure. And hey, it was uh, close last Sunday. Time. Yeah, I think yeah. it was uh, Florida last year, the first event. I think it was Frank barely hit the buzzer, or it, he like missed the buzzer by like a second or something, which I think would have put it overtime. So that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, and Vegas 2020 Revo knocked us out of, uh, Sunday. Yeah. Um, and I could go back years before that where it, it happened. So, okay. Actually it wasn't Florida last year. I think it was, uh, 2020 world cup. Okay. Does that sound I right? So. I, only, <clears throat> I got on Revo, uh, just last year. My first event was, uh, Orlando last year. Before that, I, I'm not, I'm kind of fuzzy on the events. You okay. know, for them because I wasn't on the team, but then uh, I then knew we must that have played Vegas. in the prelims. It wasn't a Sunday game. Okay. Yeah, Sunday X Factor knocked us out. Yeah, yeah, it was our first match last okay. the first event gotcha. last season. Gotcha, gotcha. When yeah. it was real close. So, 
how did you find your way onto Revo? How, what's the story on that? How did how did those dots align? You want from the beginning, or do you want uh, from? Well, I just kind of want to know how you got on Revo, and then we'll tie it all back in with you know we're gonna dip into your your story and everything um, here yeah. in just a second. So, <clears throat> actually, two thousand the end of two thousand nineteen, um, I took a little bit of time away from the game prior to that, and I was I actually got talked to by Henry at World Cup. I I played semi pro just two events that season just because I had a lot of other stuff going on in life with work and all that. Well, you're crushing uh, it, dude. As of as of 2019, you. <laughs> you are a uh, North Carolina attorney, and if oh, you yeah. need help out there, my man's got you back. <laughs> I got you. I got you. That's <laughs> unbelievable, by the uh, by the way, to have that kind of accomplishment outside of paintball and achieve what you're doing in paintball. Because the amount yeah. of time it takes to compete at a level that you've shown this last year is like, it takes a lot of time. I know I do paintball full time, and I, I you know try to play like that. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you have like a full-time real job. So it's pretty impressive. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, I mean, it's tough, but honestly, I, I would say that this past year was the first year that I'm, I was really able to dedicate so much more time to paintball than anything mm-hmm. else because makes sense. prior to that, prior to last year, it was, it was, you know, I was starting my, I, I have my own firm. So I started my own firm up. A lot of time went into that. Um, prior to those years, it was a lot of school, taking the bar exam everything like that. So this year it was really just, I was able to focus, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. sure. I think it showed. Yeah. So I would have yeah. to say so. Yeah, dude, there's Appreciate a lot to it. that, man. I've, I've been in the same position throughout <clears throat> my career where there are seasons that I just by the nature again of, of how difficult it is to <clears throat> monetize a sport of paintball, how, how demanding it is with, you know, so many different things. There's been seasons where I'm clearly more focused than other years, you know, and it just shows. I mean, I guess that's no, no surprise. It's how anything is. The more time you put into something, the better you're going to, you're going to do with it. The more, the more that you're going to get out of it as well. So for sure, Mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah, so back to uh, where, where I was. So the end of 2019, everything kind of came around. I wanted to get back to playing again. So I, I just played two events in semi-pro with uh, some, some really close friends of mine. Um, That that team was called New Jersey Supreme. Supreme. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So uh they at the end of that event, it was the end of world it was the end of World Cup. Um we did all right those those two events, but Jake Madden, who is now on Revo, his dad was a part of that organization. And Henry and Jake and his dad were about to go play for Revo, or not Brett, but Jake was. His dad was just coming along with him as well. He does a ton for the team, couldn't thank him enough. Um so being, you know, kind of one of the, the more experienced players on that Supreme team, you know, I was talked to Henry after wor- that World Cup 2019, but it ended up, I think at that time, you know, they had some players like Max Trailer and, and, you know, Dan potentially maybe retiring because they pretty much retire every year and come back. So uh, is it going to happen this year? Are we'll they see. coming back? I don't know. <laughs> trying to. So uh, you got to get a hey, juice break, it up. Break the news on PTG. Let's go. Juice it up. That's the <laughs> we'll motto. See. We'll see. I've been trying, <laughs> but uh, so I think it, it just ended up, it just didn't work out for me at that time. Um, those guys came back. There wasn't much room left for, for really anybody else to get on the team. So uh, I actually went and played with NRG for a season in 2020. Uh, that was, that was fine. It was great. You know, got to play pro again after taking a little bit of a break. Um, that's a great organization. You, you know, yeah. Yeah. It was good. Uh, you know, I like all those guys. I have love for all those guys. It was close to my house. So it was easy to, you know, travel to and, and just make it work for, you know, trying to get back into to playing pro again uh, mm-hmm. after taking some time off. So uh, did that for a year and, you know, just didn't really find myself fitting in that well with those guys um, and, you know, was looking for something else. So I went up and, you know, I, I hit Henry back up. He said, hey, come on up. We're having a you know a practice. Come jump in with us and see how you know things go. At the end of that, they were like, "Hey, let's let's do this thing, right?" So I did that. I ended up playing that. It was like a, a regional. I think they called it an NXL event. It was in Virginia Beach. Yeah, played that played pretty well with them, and, and from there, it's just been you know history. So nice, and it was cool getting on Rebo too because, like I, I was saying about NRG, I, I didn't feel like I fit in as well on that team. Um, once I got on Revo, it was like immediately just, it felt like I was best friends with those guys right away. Right. Within a week, I was just like, it just, yeah. everything clicked. Talk Frank, to me about, Supa, you know, how important is yeah. that? Yeah. Those it's connections. huge. 
it's huge. I mean, even on and off the field, yeah, Rebo is so close as a team, and I really think that attributes so much to their success. Um, you know, we go and do escape rooms together. Um, you know, as Jarrell mm-hmm. used to call us, like the drinkers and thinkers, right? We we go out and have some beers <laughs> together, have fun, just uh, just kick it. And I I really do think that that truly helps on the field, and, and that's something that I didn't. You know, no disrespect to them whatsoever, but I didn't get to see that too much on NRG, which I think, you know, if they could do some stuff more like that, I think it would help them. But with mm-hmm. Rebo, it's been, I mean, it almost feels like best friend right away. Yeah. So, yeah, the chemistry between an organization is is underappreciated. And it's something that I, I, I know the paintball community used to like scream about at the top of their lungs. And I think somewhere along the way, we tried to get like more industrialized or, you know, quote unquote professional. And there was less of that, you know, team camaraderie or chemistry that was like, that we place an importance on, you know, we, we kind of turned into more of, um, this is your job. So come and do your job to the best of your ability and fit in with the teammates. But it's not like that in sports. Chemistry is so important. You see it all over the place. I mean, look at the Brooklyn nets, you know, they just completely imploded, imploded. And, uh, they had, you know, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, they lost like 10 games in a row. You know, it's all-star lineup that can't get along, you know, whether it's on the court or off the court. And yep. so it wasn't working. And Kyrie wasn't playing much of the games because of uh, his decision. But um, still, you see that with superstar teams all the time. And uh, team chemistry, like knowing and trusting what your teammates are going to do allows you to play better. You know, period. You're going to make better yeah. decisions. You guys are doing things in sync without even discussing it on the field. And paintball, like, is for sure like that. Yeah. It's it's interesting. I mean, you could definitely tell, like, when we've been hanging out a lot more together, you could kind of see it on the field. It's sure. a weird thing, you know, especially in, in two playing with the same guys a lot as well. Like, Henry plays a lot on the same side as me. Um, me and him are super close. And I don't know if that's just because, like, we played on the same side of the field or it's just, you know, our personalities, but it's, it's, I truly think that, you know, when you, when you have a guy that's, you know, super close to you on the team, even like playing position wise, you kind of like gravitate to being really close to that person as well, just Mm -hmm. because it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we started, sorry for the listeners that have heard this story a million times, but Tyler and I started the (laughs) podcast during, you know, quarantine season, 2020, uh, pretty much at the start of the year, I think April something was, was the, the first show. Yeah. And, We've been close our whole career, but the the podcast and our our business ventures together had made us, you know, leaps and bounds closer. And then at the end of the year, we're at World Cup and it's overtime, comes down to a two on three and look over and who's over there with me? It's Tyler. You know, we pull it out, win the event in overtime in the finals. And it's like, there's something to that. There has to be something to that. You know, (laughs) it's crazy. (laughs) And there's something to it. You know, I'm I'm Uh. sitting here sitting down with this dude five times a week talking to him for three hours, you know, with mm-hmm. guests. And, and, you know, that's just on the show. You know, we were, we're on phone calls every day. Like we got closer than ever. So yeah. um, there's certainly something to it, you know, and, and uh, I think paintball is such a unique sport where you really have to trust everyone around you. Otherwise you don't make certain decisions. You know, you make better decisions for the team when you trust that, you know, if you make this move, your support player is going to follow up. If you, <laughs> if you put yourself in this position, your teammate is going to protect you. You know, like there's all of these things in paintball that are reliant on your teammates. And so yep. mm-hmm. the more that you trust them and the more that you want to play with them and for them, the better the outcome, I think. Yeah. Couldn't it's interesting because with, with communication being such a big thing in paintball, uh, it's like sometimes when I think about, uh, I talk to Henry probably the most on the team. He's just one of my like close guys, close friends. Obviously he's, he's big with Revo. Uh, when somebody's really like something's going down on the field, and I hear somebody screaming, it's like you can pick out Henry's voice because it's like you <laughs> sure. talk to him more and more. I don't know. Yeah. It's just like a funny thing. Yeah. yeah. And even like different octaves, you can tell when something, you know, just off of the the different yeah. octave of the voice, you're like, oh, 100%. you know, we got something that's really live over yeah. here. <laughs> it's spicy yeah. over there. I got to look real quick. Or like, okay, yeah. I get it. He's, he's in, the, in the four, you know, he's in the back yeah. center, whatever. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, 100%. <laughs> and and uh, Chris, you were a part of a fraternity, am I am I right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah so it it kind of goes hand in hand. Like paintball clubs are kind of like a, a fraternity a little bit. You know, it's yeah. like it's a brotherhood, a sisterhood, um, and everyone is just able to come together for the name of whether it's education or this sport, and really have the best time that they've ever had. 
And it's, uh, you know, when you have those kinds of connections that they do last a lifetime when you're on the field, off the field, it's just, it's a surreal thing that if you don't play sports, you got to get on the paintball field and just go out there, communicate, have some fun, connect with the, your community members, because it really is a life changing experience being able to play paintball and have those relationships built. Yep. I mean, you're in the trenches with them. It's, exactly. Uh, yeah. You got to go fun. to bat for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. And again, <laughs> like, the, like I said, the trust, the trust is huge on paintball because, you know, getting shot doesn't always feel great, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, no. So you got, you got to put trust in, in the people around you. And, um, you know, when you really dive into communication, there's things too that, um, in the pro division, in any division, these windows close or open <clears throat> for shorter amounts of time, like the better the players are you're playing against. So sometimes I might not be able to, to wait to, to hear somebody spell out a whole sentence, but just yeah. seeing in their body language, like what's going on on that side of the field, like, oh, he has somebody right in front of him. You know, there's, there's mm-hmm. somebody really yeah. close to, you know, Tyler. Uh, just seeing how he's playing allows me to gather information. That yeah. comes from, you know, of course, you got to play with that person for a long time. You know, yeah. if nobody's on that wire with him, I understand how his body's going to, you know, what his body's going to look like in there. Is he going to be rapping? What's he going to be, you know, yeah. what exactly is his body going to look like? And that's all stuff that takes, you know, years to build on. But yep. when you do, it definitely makes makes the foundation of a team, like, crucial. Yep. I think that has been Dynasty's, you know, success for so long. Those guys have been playing together at the core for 20 years. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I could say. It makes sense. I mean, I, I could, anytime somebody's playing in front of me, somebody that I, that I play with a lot, um, you know, if I know that they're hard wrapped on somebody, I'm like, oh, they're probably pretty safe, you know? They're, yeah, they're, totally. Exactly. They're sitting there just, or, or, you know, if they're, if they're bottled up like this in their bunker, I'm like, okay, he probably needs some help. So, yeah. Unless it's, if it's Blake and he's hard wrapped somewhere, I, <laughs> there could be somebody right in front of him still. And it's just, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't still, care. He'll still get him. He'll get him. Absolutely. He will. <laughs> Yard That's dog. Funny. Good. Okay. So I want to talk to you. We kind of hit on it. You were going to college and playing paintball at the same time. Is that right? Um, yeah. Talk to me about that experience and how many years did you go to college for? I did a lot of college. All right. <laughs> so I did, I did undergrad for four years. Actually, I did five years. So I took a victory lap just for wow. fun. Nice. <laughs> um, why not? So, nice, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah. Why not? Right. Yeah. Um, so I actually went to school at UNC Charlotte, which is, you know, 30 minutes from my house now. Shout out. Let's go. I, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, so I'm here. I don't know. Do you guys remember Heyman Chapman? Yeah, of course. Dude, I remember Heyman Chapman. I remember yeah. that song. I know all about North Carolina, <laughs> all right? Oh, yeah. Shout so out he's, to North Carolina. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, he's he's my roommate. He's been my roommate for about three years, and I <clears throat> I know Tyler. I knew that you knew him uh, from like Oakland Blast days, and, and yeah. he played at the Russians. So That's my yeah, dog. So, Heyman's the man. Oh, yeah. He's, he's awesome. So I went to college for four years there. I studied criminal justice and then I didn't really know what I wanted to do. It was like criminal justice. What are you going to do? You know, be a police officer and, and or whatnot. I didn't really want to do that, you know? Um, so I took the LSAT. I had a friend that went to law school, took that. And then it was like, do I want to go to my dream school or do I want to go somewhere that might pay for some of my schooling? Cause it's expensive. Mm-hmm. And didn't get into, into my dream school. So I went to no other better place in San Diego. There we go. Um, <laughs> so I, I went out there. I went to law school in San Diego. I lived in uh, like the East Village nice. area downtown. Dude, and, I had uh, no idea. It's my backyard. Yeah. yeah. So that's Nuts. that was like around the Ironman time when I was on there. Okay. Uh, what so, was yeah. your dream school? Which one did you, what was the dream one? Uh, Like Carolina or Wake Forest. Yeah. You know, schools like that around North Carolina. <clears throat> awesome. Um, Schools that would pretty much guarantee you a really good job and, and whatnot. And, but I would have probably had a lot of student debt. Um, so yeah. I, I chose a school that wasn't so as good, but they would pay for some of my stuff. Um, sure. There so you go. went out there. Plus, I, you know, I was still in love with paintball. You know, I wanted to mm-hmm. go out there. I knew that California was, you know, at, at that time, just a mecca. Still is just a great place to play. Yeah. Um, so I got out there. And I mean, the first thing I wanted to do was go play paintball. So I went to Camp Pendleton. <laughs> uh, so sure. I... I Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, that place is the best. Uh, Nikki oh, yeah. Fran, Camp Pendleton. Hopefully, I know it's been kind of crazy, but they're going to be back at full steam here shortly. Um, Marsh, <clears throat> do you know anything about what's going on with Camp P? 
I don't. I uh, I believe they're open. You just need to yeah. deal with having escorts and stuff like that to get you on base. But um, okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not positive. Not positive. Okay. I've been a little out of the loop. <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah, I was in San Diego at school from 2015 to 2018. Was when I did school, and after that year, I moved back home, just because you know all, all my family's here. I wanted to take the bar in North Carolina because. California bar is like the hardest in the country. And I was like, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So moved back here and uh, took the bar, passed it and, and started working. So nice. that was my rundown of, of school. And law school is definitely tough, but I was still able to kind of juggle that with paintball. And towards the end of school, once I had to start really studying for the bar um, is when I took a little bit of a break. So kind of tough, dude. <laughs> extremely <laughs> difficult <laughs> it was hard yeah i mean it was it was mainly just consistency in, in the work and non-stop work um, yes yeah know, test the testing was hard but it was just a lot of reading and writing and you know mm-hmm. all that stuff so but i got through it and I, I i honestly used paintball didn't really use it but i enjoyed paintball as a uh, an escape from that yeah I would, I would be able to go out there and it was just you know we know how paintball is just an amazing mm-hmm. way to escape kind of anything you have going on. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. I, uh, you know, I enjoyed being, being able to play at Camp Pendleton. The weather out there was amazing. Just everything was awesome. Yeah. I think that's a really big point that you made there. Like, you know, real life is pretty demanding, difficult. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot that goes on in the real world, you know, and, and being able to have an outlet like a dojo or a paintball field or a swimming pool or whatever yeah. it is that, that you can go do to get some exercise. It also relaxes the mind and, you know, just get out and have some fun. That is so important when you're going through something that is super stressful. I would imagine like taking those tests and, you know, being prepared for all that that you had going on. Yeah. yeah. It, it was awesome. It was a good yeah. time. Um, I'm Grinded. glad I did it. Yeah. Yeah. It taught me a lot. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, what what are you doing with uh, with that now? So, I started my own pra- at first when I got out of school. I took the bar. I got done with that. Um, I actually worked at a, a bigger firm here in Charlotte for a little bit, and I just ended up. It, it sucked. I mean, I had no time to do anything. It was demanding hours, nonstop, all the time. Um, I didn't feel like I was giving my cl- you know serving my clients the best I could because I I had paralegals and assistants under me who would just you know, talk with the clients. I never got to speak with them one-on-one. And I felt like I was doing them, you know, a disservice when I wasn't able to help them personally. Mm -hmm. So I decided I wanted to start my own firm uh, just because for one, I I wanted to be able to interact with the clients one-on-one and and talk with them and, uh, you know, explain my, you know, my story, where I come from and how I can help them. Uh, And then again, also, I, I just like to be more in control of what's going on in my life. And I, I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit, uh, always trying to, I remember I was really young and I would sell rubber band balls there we like go. on the streets in Chicago and just, uh, you know, Dude, I'm right there with you. Balls. When I was a kid, me and my friends would climb the trees. There's mistletoe in the trees. Like during the holidays, we would cut the mistletoe down, go buy <laughs> some ribbon and make ribbon things of mistletoe and go door to door selling mistletoe to all the neighbors. That's sick. Yeah, <laughs> It's really it's- dope. It- it's the first time I've heard that too. I used to uh, uh, tell the, I used to tell the people coming down the street, I'd be like, "Yeah, they're good for your dogs." Blah blah yeah. blah. Like, now that I think about it, I'm like, there is no way. Hey man, you did what you had to do to go to the store and get the the candy or whatever you know it was that we needed to get oh, yeah. at that age. We were grinding. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, it's been great. So I've uh, I've now had my firm since two thousand. It was just last year. No, maybe it was 2020, April, 2020. Nice. So it's coming up on two years now. That um, must've been wild opening a firm, April, 2020. Um, it was, yeah. Yeah. And it was definitely tough, but you know, we got, we got through it. I think we started to see things pick back up, but uh, I knew the mm-hmm. first year would be rough regardless. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like it didn't affect us too bad, but at this stage now, almost two years in, I have uh, three employees working for me, a full time paralegal. So it gives me a lot more freedom, and, and you know they're all super cool. Um, they yeah. you know they understand what I like to do that I play paintball, that I could go out and you know if I want to go miss a week of work, it's it's whatever, right? 
um, I'll take That's off on awesome. Fridays and, and do whatever I kind of want to do. So set myself up to be able to have some freedom and it's just been a lot more enjoyable. You are a smart dude. And oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they they probably enjoy having the NXL events on in the office watching you play. They're like, there he goes. Go get oh, him. Dude, <laughs> dude, they like they straight up stream the whole thing. I mean, when, when I'm at oh, a tournament, wow. they're, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's fight night at the office. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's game time. You're ready yeah. to go. They're like, you got to get me some jerseys. I'm like, those things are good. Man, I could sell those things. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, exactly that's, that's how i'm getting paid over here yeah mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's awesome though man that's really cool that they uh they all root for you um yep. and that's good man more people are are having eyes on paintball too um we've been talking yeah. about it the last couple shows i think we're in a better place than we have been in a long time i i feel mm-hmm. like uh we're not far from one of these big networks or social media platforms something you know <clears> saying hey we want to do something with this we want to we want to there's a lot of excitement around it. There's a lot of people that play and enjoy the game. And, um, you know, when uh, sports center posts, anything paintball, all I know is it does better than just about anything else on their platform. So 100%. Yeah. It's all yeah, about the was, numbers. That one, uh, that they posted the call of duty, uh, what do they call it? Slide cancel. Slide cancel. That was, yeah. that was sweet. So. <laughs> yeah. That was like the first one they posted. I think they posted two since then. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, again, it's like, I look at the analytics, I'm like, okay, I know that they're recognizing <laughs> how course. well this post is done. So if you guys are listening to this, mm-hmm. if you ever see paintball posted on any of these share major it. platforms, share it, show out, comment, like, yep. share, yeah. like that is so big for, for our industry because, mm-hmm. you know, again, they have teams that are dedicated to what gets the most likes for their platform. That's what, that's what they're hired to do. And when they see, Hey, when we post paintball stuff, like something weird's happening. You know, this, this shit is going viral every time. I mean, maybe we might start getting some, you know, everyone says, let's get back on ESPN, this and that. The beauty is nowadays you don't really need to, you don't have to be on ESPN, uh, to make it big, you know, with, with the internet, with YouTube, with, you know, all all the different platforms. TikTok's big too. Yeah. TikTok is big too. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I still, still not in on TikTok. Yeah. I I don't have one, but Come on, get your, you got to start doing the dances, <laughs> do the whole thing. Come on. No, I have, I have started, um, you know, trying to do my part on, you know, on social media, especially Instagram. I've been trying to, you know, I'm not very good at it, but I try to we make need some you. reels, yeah. trying to make some reels. And I've, you know, uh, I try to comment on, on stuff and like everything that I can. That's paintball just to, you know, support yeah. it. And, uh, nice. it's, those, those reels are, uh, they're pretty powerful. It's a cheat code. It's a cheat it code. Is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, post, I've only done two of them, and it was like ridiculous <laughs> how many people saw those. I was like, yeah. "What?" <laughs> it's because they're trying to take down TikTok. Yeah. So yeah. they realized, like, when TikTok came out, I remember some paintball players, a few, a, a small portion, were like in the TikTok world, like, "Yeah, we're getting millions of views on this." You know, TikTok is is the way. And like, what's going on that you're getting that many views? It's crazy. You know, it's something that just hits the algorithm, and kids are sitting there scrolling. And they see it for a couple seconds. And so you you see those numbers and you become addicted. <clears throat> and now yep. Instagram, same thing they did with Snapchat with the stories, you know? Yeah. What is Snapchat now? Is that a thing anymore? I don't know. I don't use it, you know? Never barely. really did, but yeah, barely. Like who you all the cool people use Instagram. Um and they're doing the same thing with TikTok, right? So Dude, uh, Snap is still alive. It's thriving. Is it's it? Doing I great. guess. I don't know. I, I mean, only snap like bought it though, right? Four or five people. I think so. Yeah. 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 I think I guess it's like more for personalized stuff. I don't know. I haven't yeah. opened my Snapchat app in a long time. Um, but the point being is that it, it's definitely a cheat code because if you post a reel and it's it's decent, it yeah. has the ability to get like insane views. And these are real people that are going to be watching your stuff. I, I think it's real. Who knows? Maybe there's some bots and stuff. I don't know. But um, people it's are cool. seeing paintball. You know, you look at like Rye Guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, his stuff is blown up and you got to think that that's amazing for the sport of paintball. You know, these are, yep. th- those definitely are not paintball players, all paintball players that are following him. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that follow him that probably saw some of the clips and are just like, this raw footage of these people shooting these things at each other looks really sick. That could be even better, though. I don't know that we don't we don't want just paintball players to be watching. No, our videos. it's way better. Yeah, That's what we I'm need, saying. It's way yeah, better. Totally. We need everybody yeah. that's not in paintball. To yeah. Have, yeah, 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 exactly. Has, he's crushing it with that. Dude, it's way better. Right? Like, yeah. like we have go sports. We have our, our platforms that the hardcore dedicated paintball players and paintball fans are going to watch and see. Yeah, we don't need that. I mean, we need that. 
but we need both. More yeah. important, we need both. We need mm-hmm. we need people that don't understand what paintball is to see it and say that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's what we yeah. need. That's the most important thing for for the game. Yeah. And uh, those reels right now are the biggest cheat code to make it happen. If you can get some like slow motion of you shooting somebody or yeah. bunkering somebody, dude, you're gonna get crazy numbers. And it's <clears throat> awesome for the sport to have those clips out there. Oh yeah. yeah. I also too, I've noticed like when I when I have a reel that I post versus just a regular post, you'll get so many more people that generally don't like your stuff or or repost it or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. or, or you'll get followers sure. that you don't really have anything to do with paintball. And it's kind of like, yeah, this is, this is definitely being seen by other people aside yes. from just the ones that follow me, um, for my content specifically. So you could tell it's maybe on the explore page and it's yes. you know, being picked yeah. up by other, other people. So it's great. Absolutely. Yeah. And they've got it designed on the back end. Like Marcelo was saying with the algorithm, it's designed when you post a reel, it just hits differently in there, you know? Mm-hmm. So if you're I don't out want people there, to migrate to TikTok, <laughs> yeah. you know, so. they're getting that dopamine hit from, from all <laughs> yeah. those damn views. They're like, Hey, we can offer that here with Instagram too. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. <clears throat> post a reel. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's it. Um, but uh, with that being said, you know, it's funny. I did just have this conversation with a photographer, um, a, a really well-known one, does amazing work. I'm not going to name him, but he was like bummed about having to post reels because he's like, it's not my, my, you know, I don't enjoy it as much. I have all these beautiful photos with like this pristine mm. work, you know, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and I can post a 10 second clip of anything in paintball. You know, it doesn't even have to be that cool and it gets way more traction, but it's not what I'm passionate about. I'm like, look, don't look at it that way. Yeah. But don't look at it that way either. You know, don't compromise your art. That's for sure. But understand that you're doing a major service to the sport of paintball. If you are getting paintball seen by the masses in any way, and and if this is the way, then that's huge. You know, it really is. We're in like a, you know, that's the argument that Maddie Marshall always makes with some of the athletes that don't like to do interviews or don't like to, you know, come on the air, put themselves out there we're not the NBA that it's already a a sport that's so well established to where you can have athletes that just don't really care about the media side of it. Um, you, we're not the NFL. We're not, you know, any of these other sports that have already made it. And even in those sports, there's a reason media days are mandatory. There's a reason, you know, all of this stuff is mandatory to an extent. Uh, it's because the leagues understand the importance of, of those days and, and that media in order for their sport, which is entertainment at the end of the day, let's, not kid ourselves. What we do is entertainment. It's a, it's a sport to us. It's a competition to us. But the only reason it makes money is because it's entertainment. So yep. paintball's mm-hmm. in a, in a different space, you know, uh, where we need the, the the pros, especially we need everyone that plays paintball to show out for it if we care about this thing, you know, really getting anywhere. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I completely agree. So Chris, I want to talk to you about your. I'm sure you have a high IQ and playing <laughs> playing paintball. Um, is kind of a really interesting game in that regard where if you can crunch numbers and work through situations quicker, be more efficient and, you know, come to a solution faster than your opponent, you're going to typically do pretty well out there because at the end of the day, we're trying to outsmart each other out there. That's the name of the game. How can Mm -hmm. I outsmart these, my opponent, the other team? So how has, you know, school studying in the different facets that you've studied in um kind of complemented your paintball game oh man that's tough because I've, I've i feel like my studies have been just all over the place um mm-hmm. i would say that the consistency and how and how often i had to study it can you know it excelled my game in that aspect and just ter- in terms of working very hard at it but you know if we look if we're if we're talking about you know, making methodical moves and thinking quicker than the other opponent. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the exams I actually took in law school were timed exams. Um, Mm. you know, you would have to basically, they would give you what they call a fact pattern, which is like, it could be a story about some guy falling off a a house and you'd have to figure out like, what's the issue? What's the rule of law? How do you apply it? You know, they would only give you a certain amount of time to, to, to figure it out and basically write an answer to that. Um, so, you know, I, I would have to think super quickly about what's going on, spot this issue quickly. And it's that kind of, uh, you know, aligns Hard itself walking. with the game because yeah. you see those same situations break out, you know, break down on the field. You know, you come out shooting to, you know, an insert spot and you see a guy run past that spot and you're the only guy, you know, you're just that wide. I mean, 
your, your first thing is I, I got to try to get wide, right? Mm-hmm. You got to try to match this guy. Uh, so it, it helped me, you know, find these situations quicker, um, especially with one-on-ones as well. Um, I, my, my kind of game with one-on-ones and I didn't want to give away too many secrets, but really it's like trying to make them lose me, mm-hmm. you know, run around the field and, and, you know, I'm going to come shoot you in the back. So, yeah. uh, you know, just thinking quicker than, than that other person. I think that, you know, a lot of the testing that I have done in, in school, you know, has helped me spot those issues, helped me to, um, make quicker decisions as well. So, yeah, absolutely. And the work ethic too, like you were talking about, you know, all the hours, you know, how to, how to apply yourself, you know, how to work hard. Mm-hmm. So when and you take efficient. that, Hey, there we go. That's it right there. And when you mm-hmm. apply it, when you do that to anything, you're going to have good results. Yeah. Yeah. I would say efficiency is good too, because I could go, you know, I, I, it's when you get to the field, you know, if I'm, if I'm studying for a test or, uh, you know, I'm, going through the motions at, at school it's i only want to pull out the most important thing to to do and study yeah. when, when i get to the field it's like you know I, I i practiced a full weekend last weekend now i'm going to go out here and drill this week what is mm-hmm. the things that i you know know that i need to take from this past weekend and really work on on this drill day right mm-hmm. um instead of just you know wasting my time doing something else it's it's thinking about the fastest that you're not you know that you didn't have a good weekend playing you know, in that specific area and, and, uh, just being able to be more efficient in your, in your practice. Yeah. That's a, that's a humbling experience right there too. You know what I mean? When you actually live life like that, it's, it's not glamorous. You're not looking for glamour. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're looking for, for, like you said, the most efficient route, the most, um, Mm -hmm. you know, solid route that you can find, to make yourself the best player out there every time that you show up to the field. And I think there's a lot of really important stuff to be said about, you know, your work ethic, the work ethic and applying yourself. That's why you've been able to become successful, man, is is right there. Yeah. And that actually brings up a good point. I was listening to, I'm sure you guys have probably read the book relentless or listened to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, The, the port, the part in the book where he's talking about how, you know, the cleaners are the most elite athletes and how they, they actually didn't enjoy the process. Like a lot, of, I hear a lot of people say that I truly enjoy the process of you know practicing, and and you do to an extent. But if you really want to be the best at the sport, I mean, <laughs> there has to be days where you hate it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Just how that was is. one part of the book that I wanted to push back on as I was reading it. But I guess, like, I don't know how you take it. There's definitely there's mornings that I wake up. There's weekends that I wake up. There's times where I don't want to go do what's required, but you push through it. And yeah, yeah you know, maybe. It, that wasn't enjoyable, but it almost always like when you look at the whole body of work, when you look at like when the workouts complete, when the training days complete, when the tournaments complete, my overall feeling of the whole process was very enjoyable. Maybe like there's certain days and stuff, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't know how, how to interpret that in the book. And that was like one of the things where I was like, ah, you're trying to make a hot take, I think, you know, Mm -hmm. and I don't know, but I do see what you're saying. Um, the reality is efficiency, the reality is efficiency doesn't come from, um, from being comfortable, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't do that because in order to be efficient, you need to trim the fat and work on the stuff immediately that is going to get you better. And that's uncomfortable. That's the stuff that you're not comfortable doing. So yeah. efficiency doesn't coincide with comfort. And that, that to a lot of people is, is difficult for them to, to uh, you know, face. And so you waste time you know, playing five on fives against, you know, lower divisional teams or playing one on ones, but not really, you know, um, challenging yourself in them or doing a couple drills, but not really pushing yourself because it's comfortable. So you lose the efficiency in, in comfort. Um, and that really to me is where it's like, I know that I get a good practice when I'm, when I'm again, not enjoying it. So maybe this was his point in that, right. You know, I'm like, ah, this is hard. This is frustrating. This is difficult. But then For I sure. leave and I'm like really satisfied, you know, so I guess I don't know which part of my emotions do I take and tell the story with. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's a good point, because uh, I was actually I was playing this past weekend, uh, my home field, and there's a, there's not a lot of players that are maybe above Division two at my home field, um, you know, myself. And then there's a guy named Brian Besterman, who I, I play a lot with there and we do drills together. But <clears throat> we were playing some five on fives and uh it was funny. Me and him were discussing that we, no disrespect to anybody else out there, but when our teammates would die, 
and it became like a two on four or two on five. Mm -hmm. We actually enjoyed that more than we did just because it actually gave us that, you know, that down body situation. It made it harder on ourselves. And that was, you know, more fun than just, you know, just playing five on five and and just Mm -hmm. running down the field. Um, Of course. Yeah. Um, uh, Sorry, real real quick to interject up right there, because I was just working with the team in Vegas over the weekend and they're, um, you know, shout out to, uh, the, the Vegas golden misfits, um, a bunch of the old dude, (laughs) so stoked to work with these guys, a bunch of the old LTZ players from back in the day. So they, um, they've played, they've played in the pro division, you know, there's, there's four of them, uh, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, a bunch of new players as well, but they played in the pro division and and now they've, they haven't played in 10 years. They're completely deranked. So they're starting up in division three again to see how they fare, but they're, they're definitely the best team at their field. So, you know, they're asking me like, what do we do to not, you know, we can't really travel and go play better teams. This is kind of what we've got. We're in like this little pocket here. Um, there's, you know, like one better team out there, but they don't always want to give them looks. It's a whole thing. You set intention in your points. So just like you said, you guys are playing five on five, but your favorite part of that five on five was when it became a two on five, you know, Mm -hmm. and now it's really challenging. Well, teams can do that from the start of the game, you can say, Hey, we're down two points and we have to score two points in, in two minutes or three minutes, you know, or, Hey, we're up points. Let's try to see how much time we can kill, make the game itself more challenging to you. Even if you're not playing against better players and, and have these objectives and it's really going to help your organization in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um, For sure. Yeah. And so that was free tips there. Happy to give them out. And Bob (laughs) helps communication too. Yeah. Dude, Bob long, what we would do when I was coming up as, you know, our, that was the first pro team I was on, we had a huge group of people. We had like 12 to 15 people on any given day. So you would just run the best line of players against everyone else. And by osmosis, it's going to make your really good players, obviously, you know, they're probably going to not enjoy that as much because they're going to run over the other team. But those players on the other side are going to get better quick, really quick. Yeah. You know, and and just having that also, if you don't have a ton of people, if you have, say, you know, three or four that are really good, just kind of, you know, try to nurture the talent that you have so that you can cultivate the future, you know, essentially of that organization as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was a guy last week at the field and uh, I heard him. I overheard him say, oh, that team, that team's on the field right now. I don't want, I don't want to go play against them. And I was like, mm. what are you doing? Get out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Come on. You're going to get you don't want to do that. Don't do no, that to yourself. That's what you want. Yeah. The so uncomfortability. Want that yeah. One so. of the most frustrating things for me when I'm out at the local field, I mean, on one hand, like I, I like it, I appreciate it. But on the other hand, I hear these players consistently talk about wanting to go pro. This is their dream. They're working their butts off. They're doing this. They're doing that. And then I have an off weekend. I'm out at the field and all they want to do is play with <clears throat> me and the other pros that are out there instead of against us. Yep. I know when when we were kids, like Mouse, myself, Dalton, we Tyler, I mean <laughs> Tyler before any of us at 12, different camp, but us with Aftermath, we were so stoked to play against the Dynasty guys or any pros that were at the field. It was like almost yep. a chip on our shoulder, like we can do this, we can take you guys down. We're only 15. You know, like that was that yep. was our mindset, our mentality of of that. And so nowadays, anytime kid they want to come and play on our team, I'm like, all right, we can play a couple points, but then you got to go down there. You know, yeah. like you guys go down there. That's where you're going to get better. You know, this is a great opportunity. You don't get to go and practice pros in, in any mm-hmm. sport, really. Yeah. You know, yeah, so 100%. take advantage, take advantage of it. You know, get on the other side and challenge the pros. Um, and you could do it without having a big ego about it. You know, none of the pros like the, the that's right. that comes up, like challenging them. It's like, okay, let's go. I don't think you realize how different the game is, but yeah. we can, we can go. Well, that's um, the most important thing that you're talking about is you, we can still have a really great experience. Like that's the number one thing is we want, everyone who plays paintball to have a good experience when they leave the field and we can cultivate a really positive, uplifting, nurturing Mm -hmm. experience where we're teaching and passing down the torch. And maybe you do get torched all day, you know what I mean? But, but we're going to like, as long as there's no maliciousness, everyone's playing, having fun, learning, cultivating, there's a really powerful way you can do it and nurture the future and still you know, give them top level games and you're playing top level ball and, and start, you know, like cultivating that next generation. Cause we've got to make sure we do that properly as well. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Also too, uh, another thing I notice when I go to the field is 
you know, I've made it to the pros. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm mm-hmm. here. I'm still the last person out there yeah. on the field at the end of the day. And yep. there could be all, all the other kids sitting around, you know, and they're probably listening to me right now. But <laughs> I hope they hear this and I hope that, you know, mm-hmm. next weekend they stay out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm still out there, you know, snap shooting poles or doing whatever I'm doing, running and shooting. And, and they're sitting over there lollygagging, doing whatever. And it's like, guys, you want, you want to get to this level? Like I'm still out here doing this, That's you know? Right what it takes it's you got to stay there once you get there i mean that is, that's yeah, a whole different story it's it's mm-hmm. my bad i think uh <clears throat> i think we lost it for a second there um but oh did you I, yeah i caught the tail end of it but you're right uh you need to be consistent one thing is like how do you ever expect to pass the people ahead of you if you don't put in more work than them i guess you can make the argument of efficiency but the point remains, dude, you know, you, you gotta be out there. Um, for me, you know, I like to get to the field early and stay late. Dynasty, mm-hmm. sometimes they like to get there late, but they'll stay really late. Like till the sun goes down mm-hmm, for me, yeah. there's something about waking up early. Uh, and, and like, maybe it's because you don't like to do it. Like nobody really wants to wake up early. So to me, there's <laughs> something about like waking up super early and getting to the field, you yeah. know, pretty early so you can get that work in. But I see everybody that's out there. I see the other teams too. The, you know, in SoCal, we've got a lot of pro teams <clears throat> that are out there working. You see who's putting in the work. You see what teams mm-hmm. uh, are really, really about it and trying to get better. Um, and then mm-hmm. when you get to the events and, you you know, people talk in the pro division too. You hear about other teams and how their practices go and things like that. Yep. It shows. It definitely shows. Mm-hmm. Definitely For sure. Shows. For sure. Dude, me and Alex, uh, Fraji. <laughs> At the dynasty practices, we'd be yelling, till the sun <laughs> sets behind those mountains, you know, it's just like going crazy. It was, I'll never forget those, uh, those weekends out there were crazy. Yeah. I would always, I would always, I'd, I'd always say, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy to wait until the sun sets behind those mountains. When you showed up four hours before the sun sets <laughs> behind those mountains. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, I was actually talking about, uh, Alex last night I texted or was it it was Super Bowl night I texted Frank at this the halftime show and uh Snoop Dogg dude he was out there crip walking the whole yeah. time and yeah. it reminded me of one of the events last year Alex comes <laughs> crip walking into our pit and me and Frank lost it dude. it was the funniest thing <laughs> oh that, my god Snoop doing that I just had me had me dying the other night so dude, funny. That's hilarious that Alex performance was-, was crazy Super Bowl it was good mm-hmm. oh man. I-, I liked it I mean that's all time that's all time. Yeah. That's all time. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. For yeah. Sure. No, but Alex is the man, dude. He is one of the funniest individuals that I've ever met in my life. And just uh, a, an amazing human being. Did you see when, I, what event was it? I think it was World Cup. <laughs> Where after, yeah, it was World Cup. Like after the first point, he goes down the field, has a great point, shoots a couple of bodies. Then he's like limping into the start oh, station, his, pretending like he's got cane. a cane. Yeah. <laughs> that was That's great. amazing. I hope that I can, you know, get to that age where you're, you know, quote unquote, the old guy in the league, but you're still dominating and you get yeah. to have fun like that with your friends. Like that's mm-hmm. epic, dude. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's what dreams are made of right there. It is. It's that needs stuff. to be an NFT. Why do we not have that as an NFT yet? That uh, would be great. Rye guy's working on it as we speak. He's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> there oh, we go. Amazing. <laughs> dude, uh, be on the lookout. Rye guy's going to have some, some stuff coming out and you know, PTG, we're working hard too to bring you guys some cool art in the future. Um, so be on the lookout for that as well, but we will dive in. I want to talk about, uh, climbing. You like climbing, right? Uh, you, you go out and do some rock climbing or or that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know where you saw that, but that was kind of a while back when I was kind of into climbing a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I was a little bit, I I have a buddy who's really good at it. Yeah. Um, but it was something that I just, it, it wasn't as satisfying as anything else mm-hmm. tyler's um, our investigator he will he will dig it up he will dig it up. you're on ptg he gonna dig it up <laughs> he dug that up for sure <laughs> yeah dude because i i love climbing i saw that uh that you, there's actually a huge monster climbing facility that's going in like 10 minutes from my house it's unbelievable so stay okay. tuned to my instagram because i'm about to be climbing to the top it's got this oh yeah it's self-propelling belay Hopefully the belay works and I don't plummet, but uh, we're hoping for the best in there. It's it's going to be pretty pretty fun. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah, no, yeah. climbing. Um, I I was into it for like just a short little period of time, kind of as like a workout thing. Yeah, um, you know, you can get super strong doing that. Um, Absolutely. 
Totally. And it was just kind of like something you could do on the weeknights and, and just for fun. Um, mm-hmm. I got some buddies that do it and I don't know where you found that Tyler, but you gotta got diversi- to <laughs> d- diversify the portfolio. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you can't just keep always exercising the same way. So climbing. Gotta, up, yeah. Great one to get in there. I got to update something. Yeah. <laughs> Chad George uh, does a lot of climbing, you know, speaking, speaking of let's talk about your shirt. There we oh, go. Yeah. yeah. Shout for, out to Fedorov. For all, yeah, for all the listeners, gang, head gang. over to YouTube. Gang, gang. My man's is wearing a shirt of Fedorov, gang, gang shirt, mm-hmm. yellow hat. This looks like it's from 2007. <laughs> Dude, I got actually the, 2006. Six. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got the scoop Damn. on this too. You, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So yeah, there's a good story about this. Uh, <laughs> so this picture on my shirt for every, everybody, if they're watching the YouTube, yeah. Uh, without the gang gang on his shirt because ronnie put that on there but, yeah <laughs> oh nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah ronnie d's on shout out to him he made this shirt um i think he only made a couple of them he gave me one because i actually supplied him with this picture there we uh, go and this picture is of me and Fedorov, and it's still on my grandma's refrigerator it's been there forever you know Whoa. It's, it's, yeah yeah so it was in 2006 it was like my second year ever playing paintball I went to a clinic that the Russian Legion did in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's one of the paintball central locations. And uh, Fedorov is there. I took a picture with him. And it's this, that's him in the picture that Ronnie took off. You know, he basically just photoshopped him out of there. But in the real picture, I'm standing next to him. Uh, So Ronnie, they all (laughs) thought it was so funny because he's wearing this hat. I think they were making fun of him saying he was like the McDonald's man or something. (laughs) Dude, actually the whole squad... Ron got yellow hats, red shirts. We we're they were looking like Fetty, like an old Fetty Wap. Getting yeah. them. The back of it actually says uh, "Young Fetty '88." Yep, on the back, That's Young so. Fetty. Where yeah. uh, where can people go and see this this photo? What's uh what's your Instagram? Oh man, uh, oh yeah, it's just Chris and Sheer. So S C H E H R is the last name, and I think yeah. I did post it, but it's like one of those yeah. pictures where you have to oh. scroll over. There you yeah. are. My research okay. isn't anything crazy. I literally just go to your Instagram and then I look and I saw like I saw this shirt, this old photo with you and Fedorov. And uh, I thought that was super cool, dude. And then yeah. obviously the climbing. You run marathons too. Head over to his Instagram. Check out his story. Oh, shoot. I, I, I'm about to share it right now. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done a marathon yet. Uh, my girlfriend, she runs marathons. The most I've done is a 10K, but I, I do run a lot with her and do nice. like different classes and Man, mm-hmm. I did a I did a spin class last night with her, which is the first time I've ever done that. And I was just <laughs> like, I was ready to collapse. After. Yo, spin classes are no joke. I haven't done one in a long time, like an actual spin class. I ride the bike a ton, do my own, yeah. you know, version of that exercise. But shoot, it's probably been seven, eight years since I've actually done a spin class. But they kick your butt. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But it was <laughs> no do. joke. Like I, I have a whole new respect for the for the ladies that that go in there. You yep. know? Mm-hmm. I was the only guy out. in there last night. Crush yeah. It. yeah yeah they may not look super strong but holy smokes they are tough they're mm-hmm. tough and they're yelling at you too they were yelling at me like keep, keep those rpms over 120 <laughs> <laughs> they'll let you know mm-hmm. yeah it's serious business in there you're working no joke yeah straight <laughs> up <laughs> man yeah awesome guys well shoot for the youtubers real quick just oh i lost it yeah, you got to peep the shirt. Fetty's in you gotta classic fashion. Let's see if I can. There we go. Marcelo has it up on the screen for anybody on the YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's the it's old like, picture with the new <laughs> that's picture. That's hilarious, <laughs> yeah. That's so dope, though. Look at you, bro. Are you kidding? So that's that's really cool, man. Like, you're, you're a young kid, a fan, obviously. You're out there busting your butt, trying to get better. And then yep. here you are, a photo as his, you know, uh, colleague, essentially, you know, or his, yeah. uh, you know. His peer. That's amazing, dude. I think I got a little taller than him. Yeah, 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 maybe. How tall are you? I think I'm like 5'10", I believe, right around there. Dude, so talk to me about that. What's that like? (laughs) What you mean? The whole, the experience of the... Yeah, Tyler the, doesn't know what it's like to be short like us. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, the, uh, the experience of like being there, watching that game, and then now you're playing heads up against them at the events. Dude, it's crazy. Uh, obviously we, you know, Tyler, we face off with you guys last year mm-hmm. a couple times and, uh, yeah, I, you know, that one in Chicago, um, was the best I think I've ever played against Fedorov. I've played against him, you know, 
numerous times, but he's, I mean, he's an animal and Mm -hmm. to have met him at that age being so young and then to continue to work through the ranks, work through the ranks and, and, and make it to, you know, being named Dorito player of the year over him is just a, incredible. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say how crazy he was one of the nominees in that Dorito yeah. player of the year conversation too. Wow. And I think, you know, one of the reasons I, I may have got it over him and what, you know, Quinn and, and I were talking about was, uh, you know, my performance in Chicago, especially in that match against Houston heat, you know, mm-hmm. I, I kind of had his edge just a little bit in that match. And it's just honestly crazy for me to even think that that's like, that's a thing, you know, and for also too, what's crazy is how he's still playing and looks, you know, in, in such great shape that he's in with that picture monster. being so old. I mean, he's, he's a monster yeah. and you done pissed him off. So he's yeah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> you done him off. He actually, uh, he, he hurt my feelings at the practice before world cup because, uh, oh, I'm he, like, he's, he hurts. He's painful. Yeah. He's, he's going for it. He, I can't remember what it was. I, I was stepping out wide on the Drudo side and, and he came out and, he like bounced me or something. I don't know. And then he came back out and uh, he started to run me down and he yelled at me and he was like, get out. I like, I'm like, come on, Fedorov. You see that picture we have together? Like, <laughs> I was just a little kid, man. Yeah. yeah he, so he came over kind of talking smack, mad at you. Uh, that happens. That happens. Yeah. That happens. He so. thought he shot you. Did he shoot mm-hmm. you? Well, he Be said honest. he bounced tell, him. Tell, he, tell he the truth. Me. He bounced me the first time and then he came and he ran me down. <clears throat> But he didn't oh, shoot me that much. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like he ran off the field and came to like grab you. No, no, no. you off the field. So, oh, that's funny. It, well, step- what, what's also funny is that's how quick he does it too. All of a sudden he's shooting from the back center and then he's running down the field. Yeah. <laughs> well, I stepped, okay. we, were, we were both on the Dorito side and I stepped out wide because the way those Doritos were, you could come out wide and kind of like see the edge of their side yeah. of all the Doritos lined up. Uh, so he was, I came out wide to shoot at him and he, and he snapped out real quick and, and he did bounce me and I jumped back in. And as soon as I jumped in is when he took off, mm-hmm. you know, just, he just made that quick second, you know, decision to come after me. Dude, paintball is the best man. And yeah. the league that we got right now with all the players and everybody in it, it's just a great time to be in pro paintball and in paintball in general. But there's so many good games that are going on at these events. It's, it's really a special time for the game. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, actually, that we were talking about that move. Uh, if we went back to talking about how uh, fast decisions are made, sometimes mm-hmm. you have to you have to think for the other opponent as well. Yeah. You so, like do. in that in that situation, whenever I jumped back in and he bounced me, I was already thinking in my head. I know what I would have done in this situation. I'm I'm going to come bunker you, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's you're trying to set back up. You just jump back in your bunker. So I already was ready for him because I knew he was coming, right? So you just have to know, you know. Think about those situations. And he still got you? We traded. Yeah. Okay. All right. But, Dude, he's 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 the best running gunner that I know in the league. Yep. The shots that that he personally has made on me, like making moves, I've never been shot like that before. Um I, his accuracy on the move, I think, is the best in the league. Mm-hmm. What I've noticed about Fedorov is when you play against him, let's say that you're mirrored up with him and, you know, let's say the insert bunkers on the Dorito side. And if he, if he puts you in for a second and then he goes to make that move, he shoots like two or three balls at you as he's moving. And mm-hmm. those three balls, if you, if they you are, hit you. they will hit you. They I mean, you. he is so yeah. good at, at that, yeah. those three shots as he's like moving out of that spot. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to the- me, that's, that's his strongest uh, fundamental for sure. Mm-hmm. All, all of his other fundamentals are obviously good, but his his running and shooting, his ability to be accurate on the move is like, it's nuts. It's yep. nuts. He's shot me out of a back center before doing a run that should never be allowed on, you know, a tape, <laughs> like around a corner. And, uh, and it's like, I'm shooting the gap and he runs through it and puts a ball on me. I, it's just happened enough times. You know, there's not many people in the league that I that remind me like, and I'm like, okay, that guy got me. You know, like that's yeah. what he got me. Fedorov is definitely one of them with with shots on the move. See, it's unbelievable. And actually, Tyler, sure. do you remember the drill that he had um, in, informed us of when he was on the show? Mm-hmm. That yep. I think uh, alluded to it. I forgot what episode number that was, but if you guys haven't listened to the Fedorov show, you need to go back and listen because the drills that he was doing in Russia is nuts. Yeah. <laughs> have you listened to that episode, Chris? I don't know if I have. 
You got a picture with Fedorov? He was over here on PTG and you didn't listen to the damn episode? I probably have. How early was that one? I, what do you mean I probably have? You either have or you haven't. You probably haven't is what you haven't done. Uh, I, don't, I think that was in like the 40s, 50s, somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, maybe. I think it was okay. like middle middle of the pack kind of. Um, yeah. Here, let's Come, see. We're coming I'll, I'll up on uh, 130 right now. But yeah, yeah he's, he's just an absolute animal out there. Um, honored to run alongside him. And uh, you guys definitely played some great paintball as a team. Revo really stepped it up in 2021. Yeah. Which episode was it? What episode do you think it was? 88. Oh, it was 88. Uh, for yeah, sure. <laughs> it was 88. Yep. For sure. Um, so obviously there's been some changes that have happened uh, moving into the 2022 season. Kind of talk to us about what's going on with Revo, how you guys are formulating. Obviously your year ahead with uh, the shifts that have been made. Crazy off season. Crazy off season. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely agree. I've, I've heard you guys say it on all the other shows. Mm -hmm. Just how, I mean, this is probably the wildest off season ever. So straight up. Um, <laughs> with yeah. that aside, it was, de you know, I'll, I'll just speak on, you know, the Revo situation mm -hmm. to start. It's just, it was tough, man. It felt, it, those, you know, Zupa and Jarula were two great players to have on the team just really good guys on and off the field. And I still, you know, have a lot of respect for them. I still, you know, they're still my great friends. I talk to them, you know, all the time. I, I was texting Zupa today. Um, but it did, it felt like, it felt like you got like dumped, like you broke up with a girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, or your girlfriend dumped you. Uh, because I felt like we had such a good team mm -hmm. uh, that when they left, it, it just didn't make any sense to me. I almost felt like it was not, you know, we always say impact and, and, you know, some of the teams, you know, they have, they have some, some money backing them and it's like, they lose some, some core players. And now you're going to go there to replace those guys, you know, to get a paycheck. It's like, you know, if you had a little bit more respect for Revo, it's like, this is our year, you know, this is our third year playing together. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, you watch, or I mean, it's more for them, but well, I guess this would be my second year, but it's like, this is that year that I think would really come into just, just, our, our time to shine. Right. So that one hurt. Um, like I said, still my, still my great friends. Uh, Frank was probably like, he was the guy that I first became super close with on, on Revo when I first got on there. Um, but I, I mean, I understand his decision to get aftermath and, you know, that's just something that he wanted to do and mm -hmm. you know, nobody, nobody, he's, there's no hard feelings with that. Um, he's a great player. Yeah. It he's was hard for me though with, with, with the other guys just because we kind of had this, this deal where we should stay together and, you know, I don't want to uh -huh, get into uh -huh. it too much, but yeah. Hey, stuff happens. Well, Revo was, was close. It's, it's, it's a bummer because it's kind of like, you know, AC Dallas. I, I was bummed that AC Dallas, split. Yeah, you know, too. like they were right there. You get a couple second places and I understand how frustrating it is to, you know, just keep <laughs> knocking at the door and, and not, That's the good not stuff. get the win. Yep. It is though. Like when you mm. finally win with that group, honestly, it's why it felt so good to, to get the world cup win uh, in 2020. Tyler with you and with dynasty because dynasty, it was the second drought that the team had ever been in. You know, we were definitely in a pretty big drought from pretty much 2017 till 2020, like just a lot of, uh, underperformance and, uh, and not the success that that team is used to having. Right. And so there were, there were other offers, there's good opportunities. There's, you know, you, you of course those thoughts cross into your mind, but the challenge of like taking the group that you've been going to war with and, and just figuring it out and making it work there's nothing that beats that like it is the best feeling when you win with that group and yeah. i know ac dallas would have eventually gotten it and um you know they're not even an organization anymore now revo that's not the same conversation i think you guys are still going to be highly competitive it's going to take a little bit of time to fill those holes but um you know revo same thing if, if that group stays together there's a lot of opportunity this year for for revo you could be in the finals and, and potentially you know steal an event from somebody yeah. um not that you can't still, again, I think there's a lot of, a lot of good, good talent on the team, but Darula, I thought played a crucial role in Chicago, Zupa as well, you know, big time, <clears throat> big time. I mean, we didn't have Frank for a lot of the season, right. Uh, due to injuries, but those two guys were huge. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, Frank's an awesome player as well. I, I, we, I wish we could have had him. Totally. I think we had, I think we had Frank in Chicago it would be a different story. Uh, yeah. Just the depth there, the depth. I mean, we could add anybody. That yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, let's talk about Chicago a little bit. What what mm -hmm. sparked that big run? You guys just started knocking down the Titans left and right. <clears throat> so we didn't have the greatest. I'm just glad uh, X Factor beat you guys because I don't know what we would have done in the finals. 
Yeah. You guys were on fire. Uh, I think the pre- prelims for us was actually kind of tough. We didn't play our best in prelims. And then we came into, we were, I didn't think we were going to make it. And then some rule, there was some rule cha- uh, rolling issue that happened. And it was either between us and damage who was going to go on. And uh, Jason ended up looking at up the rule book and figuring out this whole like three or four way tire. There was something crazy that happened. Um, we ended up moving on and we were literally, I mean, Jarula was over there with his tank rag off, ready to get on the plane. And we run back over and we're like, no, we're about to play impact. <laughs> so from that moment, I felt like we were almost just, we had nothing to lose at that point, really. Like we felt like we had already just kind of gone home and it's like, let's just go play. Let's go leave it out, all, you know, all out on the field and just, and just have that mentality. Like, you know, there's nothing to lose. Yeah, there's something <laughs> and, special to that actually. Yeah. Yeah. And you could definitely tell. And I mean, once we, once we won that first match uh, against, well, we actually, Take it back. We had to play our fourth prelim game. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sunday morning, which was, and we knew that we needed to keep that game as a low scoring game. We kind of knew what we needed to do for two reasons. One, because we didn't have a lot of depth. The other reason is because we, you know, a certain score would have put us on for sure. Uh, it actually ended up not happening that way. <laughs> we ended up losing that match, but we still made it on. So luckily it was a lower scoring game than it could have been because we, we probably could have lost even earlier in the tournament had it not been a low scoring game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. You guys, you played a lot of games on Sunday there mm-hmm. and then obviously rolling in from Saturday into Sunday. Um, you could tell <clears throat> when you guys met X factor that you guys had really le- legitimately left it all out there on the field, man. Yeah. I, I think we played uh 33 points on Sunday and you guys know how it what is. A great number. <clears throat> Yeah, for sure. That's my yeah, that's, number, dude. That's I know both your of your guys' number. <laughs> it's uh, you, you guys know too. Like tournament points feel so much different than practice points. Oh yeah, I would say you yeah. can go to practice and you can grind out like fifty points and something about having to run that extra time, you know, to and from the pits and standing in the pits and having to hit the buzzer, all that stuff is. I feel like just makes it so much more taxing on you. So thirty three points. Adrenaline is your adrenaline is definitely pumping a little bit more too. Yeah. Uh, whether you like it or not, no matter how calm you try to stay out there, there's something about the intensity in which you're communicating uh, and, and uh, um, executing movements out there at the yeah. tournament is definitely, yeah, Communicating I a lot. For I sure. mean, it's just yeah. takes it out of you. Uh, trying to think back where we were on that. Oh, my bad, dude. Um, <laughs> you were, you were saying you were getting right into exactly that, how, uh, at the tournament, those points feel so much more difficult. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So going through, we, after the impact match, we started to get in that state of like, just kind of flow state, like getting deeper into Sunday. And you know, you guys know how it is. Once you kind of get deep into Sunday, you're really playing a good, you know, a good game Mm -hmm. of paintball. Uh, our off the break shooting was just incredible. That tournament. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it was. I'll I'll first want to say it. We played against you guys and good game. You guys beat us on that one. And that was the game that you're talking about where you had a really good game. D side, your off the break shooting was really, really dialed in as well. And Mm -hmm. you guys played you played great in Chicago and all year. Like I said, that's why I'm I'm bummed, man, that I was honestly excited to see y'all with the with the squad out there going for those top threes because I think you guys really deserved it. All the hard work y'all put in. Yeah, Tyler, me and you actually got into a a one-on-one that match. Yeah, I don't know if you remember that. Um, Mm -hmm. That's right. Neither of us shot each other. You hit the buzzer. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. A little bit of time. Yes, still a win. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I gotta say, Chris, you got lucky. Yeah. (laughs) No way, man. I don't want to play taken. (laughs) I'd already taken two red coins that event, so I was on it. Damn. Yeah, I don't want to play Chris. No, he's (laughs) good. Nice. I, uh, I do want to kind of go back, like, so you, cause you guys played your last prelim game Sunday morning, and then you also had the wild card round. So yeah. you had an extra Sunday game mm-hmm. inherently with the wild card round. And then we add the, so if you guys would have went to the <clears throat> finals, it would have been five matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, it went, it went, um, LVL impact, which was wild card Houston heat quarters. X mm-hmm. Factor was semifinals, and then we would have played the finals. So that was four matches we played. Yeah, yeah, right. 
in that fourth yeah, match, what happened? Um, what were some of the things? I think we kind of went over it in one of our previous episodes, but just like pretty much gassed, right? Yeah. So yeah. before that, I want to. Uh, sorry, yeah, I want to. I want to go over the heat match first. You know, that's uh, we uh, we and the impact match because um, the impact match was a surprise to everybody. Impact I thought was playing really well, and then all of a sudden they get stunned by LVL in yeah. that late Saturday match. Um, but it was kind of like, okay, is is did they just get stunned? You know, they were three and zero, looking really good, and then they come out and and you guys take them down. Um, so I, I want to go through that match first, and then let's go through the heat match and and then the X Factor match. Yeah. So the Impact match, they actually went up on us. I think it was maybe three points, three or four points. They went up. Yeah. And we started to come back on them, and I think we just kept that momentum going. And what was the turning took point the to? to make that comeback. I think that they got a penalty. If I remember correctly, I, I'm that for some reason, that match from Chicago just doesn't, I don't, we, we got multiple penalties playing you guys. In yeah. I know, I know you guys did. I think there might've yeah. been one, or maybe we had a big play, uh, where Jarola broke through or something. Um, and then I also won a one-on-one in that match against Nick Laval. So little moments that hey, I think we were, yeah. we kept having in these matches so where we could come into the pits and look at each other and be like, hey, good job, good job. Like everybody's mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. stepping up in these moments for the team. Uh, that was something that I think was huge in that match. And, and once we kind of found that momentum and turned it over, uh, we just kind of ran with it. We were shooting yeah. good on the break. and you know. Yeah, the confidence building there is huge. And then the heat match, from what I remember, I feel like you guys had shot Chad George a lot on the break. Is that is I, that right? That was the, the guy coming off the field most of the time? Yes. We shot Chad Which a is, ton. Dude, if you could shoot Chad George on the break, man, it's, it helps your team tremendously. That guy is so hard to shoot, first of all. And if you dude, want to I get feels, him to a spot. Yeah, poor little Chad George, dude. I just want to like protect him. I want to like run in front of him so he can make his bunker. <laughs> uh, that's my dog, you know what I mean? And So run yes. in front of him, bro. Yeah, I will. Watch me. Um, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be cool with that. Yeah, I'll run and shoot for him. I'll gog you and then get him in safe. Let's get it going. Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> Also, we were shooting. Gog, um, I'll gog you. What the hell is this, dude? The fucking <laughs> early two thousands. It is. That's right. We keeping it alive. Mm-hmm. We were doing a good job as well. Uh, I was running out, shooting to the corner a lot on that field, and Mishka was playing that can. Which, as you come out past that can on the Dorito side, you could shoot back at it, go into that corner, and we were shooting him a good bit, kind of forcing him out towards the D side, so I could shoot him. Yeah. Uh, so we were just, you know, keying up on certain players and mm-hmm. executing well during that match. Plus, you guys got some penalties, which didn't help. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so yeah, that was that was pretty much the gist of that match. I think we, I think we kind of stayed in control of that match a, a little bit. Tyler, you at the end there when it was me and you in that mm-hmm. the one on one, and I was just kind of protecting the flag. You guys had to come. Yeah, I think you had maybe like forty seconds or something, uh, and you were That's down right. two. So you actually brought it back to just being down one and then mm-hmm. you guys had to push, but somehow, which this never happens to Rebo because we're always just fighting from the worst <laughs> positions somehow in that last point with like 40 seconds, I think we shot like four people on the break and we just kind of stood there. Like I think better off was the last one and he was just running down the Drudo side mm-hmm. and shot him. <clears throat> so yeah, you guys on that final point had the hottest guns ever. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think it turned shot- him up. Shooting 350, baby. Yeah. I think that uh, you shot three off the break or possibly four, even. Yeah. It was something like that. It was, yeah. Something that never happens to Rev. I'll say that. That was, <laughs> yeah. In I those talked, points when we needed it. Yeah. I was talking with, uh, I think it was Frank or somebody, and he said the same thing. He was like, it never happens for us. Like, whenever yeah. it comes down to that, he's like, we always lose those. And then to have that happen, he was so stoked. <laughs> Yeah, it never happens for us. I would say yeah. we we don't always lose them. We just put ourselves like we would like get to like lose two of us or something, and then uh-huh. we just have to really have to fight it out, and it would just be way more than miraculously pull it out. Yeah, those points are hard. They're hard, you know. And and it's interesting to think about the philosophy. Like <clears throat> that defensive mindset just might not be the move. Mm-hmm. Maybe you got to attack. You know, it's I, a it's an interesting thing because it's uh you feel like you can just go somewhere and and kill forty seconds easily. Why couldn't I? And then Yep. Here comes somebody running down the field and gogs you. I agree. We, <laughs> With his buddy running right behind him. Yeah. <laughs> we actually did that at uh, at World Cup. We played Infamous in the prelims, so we got a major. I think that we we ended up beating Infamous, but we were down. It was almost a nail in the coffin. We got a major. We had to start with three. It was me, 
Tarula and I think Zupa. I ran to the 40 Dorito on the break and we we won that point. It's just we had to play offense, you know. Mm-hmm. So three on five and those are tough. So there's something to that for sure. Um up is down out there on the paintball field sometimes. You gotta kinda flip it, flip things on their heads and experiment. If you don't try it, you'll never know. So, you know, at practice, try both. Try to try to, you know, do the slow play. Try if you lose two, hammer it down that side. Get creative yep. and don't get mad at the team or mad at players or mad at yourself. When we're getting creative, we just have to have it be known to the entire organization that that's what we're doing, that we're going to be trying stuff so that people don't get like irritated because that you see that happen as well. But as long as the intention is set, then you can do those kinds of things and have some good training out of it. <clears throat> For sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So let's uh, dive into that X Factor match a little bit. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Go. Let's discuss what what went down there because definitely exhausted, but at the same time, pretend that was the finals match, right? Yeah. And that happens. You can play four matches on Sunday if you have to play the wild card. I know we've we've gone through the wild card round. Tyler, you've been part of that. Uh, the Expendables over in Europe went through, won the event. Um, what was going on? Why are you guys so tired? <laughs> you guys what, what do you call it drinking and thinking were you guys drinking and thinking too much saturday night it's true <laughs> i think we would we would all ended up in the hospital at that point <laughs> um, uh, no i'm just kidding man i'm sorry i'm just kidding no no, no. Um, yeah okay so x factor hit us prior to that match i started feeling awful that's that's we'll we'll get into that story that was uh okay wow the, the sodium level stuff um but prior to that match i started oh, feeling man. a little woozy um, uh, you know, actually it was right after the heat match. I walked in, it was just feeling terrible. So then I look well, you over, were, you were okay. real quick. You were also going off that event. That was an electric event for you. And, yeah. uh, you weren't doing it from the backfield. You were, you were, you were charging down the Dorito side, pretty, pretty, uh, convincingly and, yeah. um, consistently. Right. So, uh, that kind of play, the team was definitely leaning on you. You were playing just about every point and, yeah. uh, I mean, it's going to take a lot out of you for sure. Yeah. And so I was starting to feel bad. Um, Dan Zaleski had already went to the hospital cause he collided with somebody. So he was, he seemed pretty, pretty down and out. <clears throat> uh, Zupa was cramping up really bad. We just looked pretty rough <laughs> going yeah. in that match. <laughs> I mean, I remember Maddie walked in and he was just like, you guys going to do it or what? And, and he just, he could tell we were instantly just, we were all pretty shot. Uh, I think we had six players that were that were playing, and it was hard. Uh, so we go into that match, and the first point we then we ended up getting a penalty, but we ran out that same shot. I was saying that we shot on Mishka, we shot meter at. Uh, I wrapped and shot Jesse, and then we ended up getting a penalty, which pulled me as the last player. I stood up, and basically both my legs just went fully cramped up. So I knew at that point I was like, I'm done. I I was already feeling woozy in the head. I just didn't feel right started to see like just kind of white stuff in my eyes. It almost seemed mm-hmm. like that, that gravel road that was right back there almost seemed like something was like constantly kicking up dust. And I just, that was kind of my vision. So I sat there, um, they called like some actually Tom Cole's girlfriend or wife. She came as the paramedic, um, hooked me up. She's a traveling nurse, I think. Yeah. So she, she, uh, she, she came over and, and tried to give me some electrolytes and all that stuff. And, Obviously, while I'm down and out, <clears throat> the, you know, the team now is basically running with five guys. So you got Zupa, who's still cramping up out there. He's coming in, complaining of, of cramping. Uh, Henry's now taking over my spot on the Dorito side. Thomas Mantoni's playing kind of the same spot he's been playing. And, you know, at that point, we were just honestly just felt like we were we were out of it. Like We just weren't mm-hmm. in the position mm-hmm. to our, even our mental state at that point. I remember we were getting beat up. Uh, by X Factor, and there was a point where there was maybe still even like three minutes on the clock, and I remember hearing Darilla come in and was just like he told Pat to our coach, he was just straight up like just let the time run out, like we aren't even we we can't even do this physically. That's how that's how like hard we had pushed at that tournament. So that was just hard, man. It, it was hard mentally and physically, you know, getting to that that, that area of Sunday, and I, I can't stress enough to like anyone else out there you know, in any division, how hard it is once you get deep in Sunday like that, especially if you're playing all the time, you know, every point it's, it's, it's crazy. Do you look at that event and, and use it as uh like, do you think that preparation wasn't 
<clears throat> as good as it may have should have been leading into the event or, <clears throat> or even, you know, I know. So like cramping and, and, uh, like heat exhaustion are two major things that I deal with a lot. Yeah. Um, I sweat a lot when we play, no matter, like, no matter how much water I drink, I sweat way more than that. So it's a it's really hard for me to stay hydrated. And I've spent a lot of time, <clears throat> uh, reading research and experimenting with different things. And I think I finally got it down to a little bit of a, a science that works for me, but it's not easy. Um, but I've definitely had to look inward at my preparation and things that I've done, uh, many times to get yeah. to a point to where that's not as much of an issue. Um, yeah. do you think that that might be the case? Uh, I think the team was putting in work. I can't speak on behalf of everybody, but myself, I mean, I was giving it all I could training for, you know, for that event. I was running all the time. I was, you know, probably running six to seven miles, you know, consistently, um, just getting ready for that event. And I think what happened and and what the doctors had told me for my situation was that I actually drank too much water and I ended up flushing out all the sodium, even though. I was still taking those Pedialyte packs and those, those certain mm-hmm. you know, little, little drink mixes that have sodium in them. He still just thinks that I just, I just washed it all out. Well, you know what you weren't taking was transfuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to get some. Yo, of that. dude, <laughs> shout out I'm, to the transfuse. I'm sipping, I'm nobody, sipping on it right now. Nobody mm-hmm. was taking transfuse at that time. That's why it happened. <laughs> <I got> some, <laughs> some bucha, bucha here. There we go. <laughs> Dude, uh, you just don't play the game at checkout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but for real, it's very serious. Like what you're talking about is yeah. so serious. Yeah. And making sure that that you have <laughs> um all of the nutritional power that you need in the tank. Because like you said, drink too much water, you can flush out what you need. And yep. you have to make sure that you put that back in. So it's it's very serious. Yep. Yeah. It's funny, uh, I went, so I went to, when I was at the field still, everyone thought that I was having like a really bad anxiety or panic attack. And I do have like general anxiety, but nothing that's like outrageous, right? Like I don't just all of a sudden just freak out and have a panic yeah. attack, but they thought that I was, and I was just thinking, no, I've never really had that. So, you know, they're trying all this different stuff on me and I get to the the hospital. Jarula ended up taking me after I ended up waiting to go to the hospital till what they were done with the match and everything. Uh, trooper dude yeah so i so i got in the car and um i was still hearing this the the horn at the field in my head i was still hearing the guns off the break and people screaming as i was riding to the hospital because i was so delirious sheesh yeah um, like mild heat stroke bro mm-hmm. yeah so I, I got to the hospital and, and even the doctor was like you're just having a panic attack and i'm like no i'm not i'm telling you guys and they took my blood and he comes back and he's like dude your sodium levels at a 19 when it's supposed to be between like 30 and 35. Mm. He was like, that is critically low. Like you could have had, you could have had a seizure. You could have Jeez. slipped into a coma. Oh, um, no. So it, it, it was really bad. And they immediately hooked me up. And what's crazy about uh, hyponutremia is what they call it is that they can't pump sodium into you at a super fast rate. So I was like that feeling that terrible for probably the first whole night. Um, shout out to, you know, Zupa and Jirola because they were the last ones and, and they were able to stay with me. Um, that was awesome. But, you know, I finally, the next day started feeling better. I had to wait till five o'clock PM the next day. So I could even leave the hospital mm-hmm. on Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. Well, geez, man, I'm glad that you're okay. Cause that could have been way more serious. And, uh, you're yeah. a trooper for sticking around and watching paintball <laughs> in that condition and, and, <laughs> and then going to the hospital. That's, that's wild stuff. It's actually yeah. when I got this shirt, Ronnie walked up and he was like, dude, that's right. You're not, you're not feeling good. <laughs> you go. Yeah, man. Shout yeah. out to Ronnie. He's a great guy. Oh yeah. That also is a testament to, um, how much you were willing to push yourself because your body definitely told you to stop well before, uh, those last, you know, five, six, eight points, probably at least. Yeah. <laughs> and you, uh, you just pushed through and <clears throat> unfortunately the body, uh, decided it did not like that. Um, no. But yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that we could easily, you know, be painting a different picture if, if you guys were all a little more fresh and you in particular with how you were playing at that event. Yeah, I truly think that we could have gone, I mean, at least played in the finals against you guys. Um, like yeah. even that first point against X Factor, we still showed 
you know, we still showed some yeah. tenacity and, and, and grit. I mean, you know, we got the penalty or whatever, but I, th- I think that was really like that point just put, set it off for us. We were, we were just done after that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you can't play these pro events with six players and <clears throat> that finals game, you're going to be cooked. You know imagine, what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Imagine we had beat X factor. We, we would I yeah. mean, have had that break, but yeah, that would have been insane. Yeah. yeah been nuts. <laughs> Um, yeah. You look at the Russians last year, you know, it was a, mm-hmm. a, a big downfall to their organization. You know, they, they still have like three superstars on the team, but they have to play every single point, you know, and it just wasn't enough. You could see so many times. What's crazy is that they were still kind of getting it done with with the group that they had. But then come Sunday, I think it was I think it was in Philly when they lost to Aftermath. Shout um, out Malloy. Mm hmm. Shout yep. out Malloy. He's nasty. He's, He's unbelievable. But he, nasty. you can see in his body language, like the, the, the exhaustion, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough game because you can't train for it. You can't train for being on the field in all of that equipment with, with uh, the goggles on communicating, you know, at the, the only thing you can do for that is actually play in those conditions. You yeah, know, that's yeah. the best best conditioning for paintball. But you go to the gym that has the AC on and no mask on your face and you're wearing shorts and a shirt, like it's not going to do it. You know, I could go nah. to the gym and you say you run six or seven miles a day. I learned a long time ago that that does not cut it for paintball. Nah. Um, I need like insane hit workouts, high intensity interval training, like maximum effort, try yep. to like restrict my breathing. I, I try to get creative with all sorts of different stuff that I do. Instead of being comfortable at the gym, I'm like uncomfortable wearing things that people are like, you realize we're in San Diego, it's hot out. What are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Yeah. But it's, it's really the only way because the body's amazing at how it adapts. But if we don't train that way and then we put it through that kind of like insane exertion, it's going to, it's not going to react well. For sure. Um, and the, the electrolytes and, and stuff like that leading up to the event, I can't stress this enough. So if there are any listeners out there that have struggled with this, just know I'm, I feel like I've got to be the poster boy for it because I've also Tyler, you remember it was at Dude, World yes. Cup of 2018. <laughs> I was literally passed out pretty much like laying on cardboard boxes because my whole body was cramping after practice in Florida. Mm-hmm. And like it felt like a panic attack. And it's funny you say that because that's what people were telling me too. Like, is it, you know, some kind of panic attack? I'm like, no, like there's it's not that, you know, yeah. but I felt I felt like my head was spinning. I like felt like I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. I, I was confused. It was just a really weird feeling. Like I, my body was shutting down. It's awful. It's awful. I mean, it's absolutely awful that that happened in 2018. And so it was right after I had surgery three weeks before the event on my knee. And so I didn't do any training leading up to world cup that practice. The, the Wednesday before the event was my first practice uh, since the surgery. And so I remember being on the field and like wanting to do a couple last reps And the day was over, we were doing some drills and I literally did this last one and I came in and like, felt like, wow, I got a really good workout. And all of a sudden just like hit me and like, I had to take my stuff off. And as I was taking my pads off, everything starts cramping. It was miserable, dude. Brandon short, like drove me, you know, thank God he, he like took me back to the hotel and waited in the car with me. Cause I couldn't, I couldn't get out of the car to go up to the room. I contemplated going to the hospital. I didn't, um, cause I had kind of experienced something similar to this in the past. I was like, I'll be okay. I just need to like, I can't move right now. Otherwise I'm going to start cramping again. And if you get like one cramp, it triggers a bunch of other cramps. Yeah. I'm talking like cramps down the back, like gnarly. Um, and since then I've been really paranoid about it. And I noticed there's things that I don't do. Like, like leading up to the event, I work my ass off, but my nutrition isn't totally what it should be. And not my nutrition. I eat very well, but I'm not taking the same <clears throat> amount of electrolytes that I take, uh, at the, at the events. So not going to lie, having transfuse has been a game changer. Um, I try to get it from real food too. a lot of bananas and yep. some sort of electrolyte substance and transfuse is, is definitely the spot for that. Like that's not just a shameless plug. It truly has changed the way I can prepare, but I yep. wasn't doing that kind of stuff before I was working my ass off drinking water and eating healthy, but I wasn't replenishing the electrolytes in like the three or four weeks leading up to the event. And since I've really put a lot more focus on that, I've noticed a difference, you know, but it's yep. tough. It's freaking tough, man. It's tough because again, you are forced to sweat a ton because you're wearing these neoprene pads all over. It's yep. hot. You're wearing multiple beanies. layers. You have goggles on, beanies. It's nuts. It's yeah. nuts what we do. We're, we're crazy out there. <laughs> yeah, when I went to the hospital, they were like, what were you wearing? And I told them, they were like, you're insane. <laughs> it was just yeah. hot out. 
Yeah, but, it's uh, his auto. Totally. I think, I think uh, something to the to the Ryan Greenspan no beanie thing. I hate to give it to the old man, but I think he's right. Yeah, I, I don't know. I gotta rock the beanie, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's you, a good. You take, a, you take a good dome shot, and you're like, I gotta put that back on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the beanies look. The beanie style looks good too. Mm-hmm. It does though. Good. It looks cool. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I feel sure. like none of the paint hurts at tournaments. That shit is so brittle. Nah, tournaments yeah. is good. Yeah. yeah. Practice yeah. is a whole different Practice story. For sure, though. They got these yeah. rubber balls these days. Especially yeah. up in the uh, northeast, up in there when it gets nice and cold. Taking Winter formula. Yeah, taking some dome shots up there. Yep. Get your head ringing. <laughs> yeah. Chris, I'm sorry. Did we ask where you're tuning in from right now? Yeah, I'm in uh, Charlotte, North you're, Carolina. Okay. Yep. Still yep. in North Carolina. Yeah, dude. What's, yep. the, what's the temperature like? Um, let's see. Well, today was kind of chillier, probably like 50, 52. Oh, not too, bad. not too bad. No. Yeah, um, it's like San Diego. This past weekend, we had a day where it was like 75, which is awesome. So nice. it doesn't get terrible here, but up north, it's awful. I mean, all the guys from Boston and oh yeah, you know, Maryland area, they're they're hating their lives. Um, yeah. I'm going even to Amara, uh, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, I'm going out to New York next weekend, and it's uh, they got a ton of snow, and it's going to be like 30 degrees. It's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Dude, that's Steven a good Amara, he just moved down to Florida, um, so he's you know from Maryland, so he's loving it down there. Oh yeah, I bet. Can, can Living it up. Uh, is he still going to play this season? Yeah, he's playing. Awesome. For sure. Okay, good to hear. I don't, I don't know why there was ever rumors about him not playing. Like he did hurt his, he did mess his finger up. Um, he did have a baby, but he's always you know Stevens missed I think one tournament in, in years and years. He's you know he'll be there for sure. Cool. Awesome. You guys have any uh, any news? Any other pickups? Any, anything uh, you guys are focusing on heading into to the next year? Uh, not really. Aside from the ones that we already picked up, like Rob Velez, he was a great pickup. Yeah, I think so I for it, sure. Honestly, I think if like if we could have had Zupa and Jarilla stay and, and, and Frank, and we picked up Rob, that would have been a hell of a team. Yeah. Um, Helps anyhow, you with depth for sure, and uh, just a great player in general. Rob's just a really good guy. We picked up um, Vinny Carroll from the Hurricanes. He hasn't played pro in a, a long time, but he is he's been playing semi pro for so long he, he could just jump up here and Yeah, you know. dude, that that's right. I forgot. Dude, Benny's a great pickup. I've known yeah. Ben for a long time. He uh he's a he's a thorn. He has great survivability. <clears throat> he's not afraid to attack. He's really uh he he reminds me of like Harrison Fry, and I know they grew up kind of playing together. Yeah. Um, but his form is kind of like that sporadic, really tough to shoot, kind of pain in the butt. He's gonna put himself in like these positions on the field that <laughs> that you're like, one, why are you why did you go there? But you're yeah. like causing the other team all sorts of issues and you're making it work. Um and he's like hard to dig out of spots. So yeah. He's yeah, in this like yoga position. Yeah, like. exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. He's super flexible. Yeah. Um is he gonna play the snake for you guys? I know he played the center mostly for the hurricanes. Yeah, we so obviously we needed a, a somebody to replace Supa, so um, we're kind of relying on him to do that, and I think he'll get it done. He's yeah. We, we've already had a team practice together. Actually, they all came down here since the weather was better. We uh, we practiced NRG and uh, Carolina Crisis semi pro team. It was really good. Um, awesome. You know, just, just try to get the team together and, and gel. So, other than that, uh, we picked up Mark Barolo. He was with Thunder. Okay, he he plays the Snake as well. Um, and then we're, you know, we're still looking around, uh, but nothing, you know, nothing those, set in stone yet. Yeah. Those are solid pickups. And, um, once again, it's just all about, like we talked about the connectivity, building those good relationships so that they translate onto the field and, uh, you know, making sure you guys play quality team ball out there is always number one. Yep. Yeah, for sure. What are your thoughts on the Latin saints forming super team? I was literally just about to ask that. Like that was my next question. <laughs> that was my next question, Tyler. Bo, That's funny. Got him. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, wait. It's been a while. That's what I wanted. Dude. There we go. Let's go. I would say it's kind of like what Marcelo was saying earlier in the show about how you all the superstars playing together. I mean, it's going to be tough. I think. Obviously, they're individually they're all very talented, extremely talented. You know, Mouse is just ridiculous. It's, as, as, as anybody. So it's whether they can kind of put it all together and, and, and do that. And I mean, I, obviously they've already been out practicing and, um, I could see them doing it. I mean, they've already played together for a long time. Exactly. It's, you know, it's, this isn't a new group coming together. And actually I think 
uh, they're going to, they're going to have the reins kind of lifted. You know, they're going to be able to to do what they want out there and yeah. not worry about play time, not worry about, you know, holding back. And they're going to play with a little bit of freedom because I know Brandon Short from the the Dynasty camp, you know, like he he's going to he's going to give them that. And uh, I think they're going to definitely play better than they did on impact, which is a scary thing. Right. But yeah, the issue that they will run into, <clears throat> is that, you know, in, in some of the events. As you well know, depth is a very crucial factor. So, for sure, um, yeah, I'm curious. It's exciting, man. It's exciting what the what the damn Latin Saints have done. They came in and just really uh, shook things up. They made this off season really exciting, and it's amazing for the sport. Like, it's awesome to uh, be providing these players this kind of opportunity as well. Hundred percent. I think it's crazy too that they they stole you know a lot of uh, impacts roster, and I I saw a rumor the other day that Brandon Cornell potentially would be going, but I don't know if that's true. No, um, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Um, the news was that impact is now HK. Mm-hmm. And so somebody saw Brandon playing in HK gear over the weekend and took photos and he was playing with <laughs> the saints guys. Cause I mean, they're all friends, you know? Yeah. And so that, that rumor got lit up, but, uh, definitely not true. And actually I think they did announce today. HK announced that, uh, um, they signed impact. So yeah, awesome. That's, that's what that is. Brandon staying. Welcome to the family, Impacto. Oh, yeah. Hey guys, you guys are doing it. You guys <laughs> yeah. are doing it. <clears throat> Gotta love it. It's awesome. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, I think it's good for paintball. We have um, a lot of excitement and a lot of media around the sport right now. You know, it feels like I've, I've said this on every show, and I'm going to keep talking about it because it's 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 exciting, and I want I want all the listeners and players and and uh, our peers to be excited as well because we're in a great spot um, to have so many people that care about just like telling the stories. You know, all the different podcasts now, all the different you know social media platforms and photographers and videographers. It's better than it's been in a long time, and uh, this off season made a lot of people excited. You know, you have a full team now that are getting paid. You know six figures essentially, yeah. you know, that's, that's big. That's really big. That's big news for a professional paintball athlete or just any paintball athlete that is, you know, pursuing some sort of uh, dream in this. Now, yeah. is it realistic that that's going to be your situation if you turn pro? Probably not, but can it happen? Yeah, it can, you know, and who knows, hopefully this will trickle into some of the other guys, you know, hopefully it makes like Randy and Bart have to pay their guys just a little bit more, you know, and, yep. and hopefully that trickles down into the other teams that are like, Hey, we, we have to do something to provide. Maybe it, in, it inspires, like Tyler says a lot, this is a low entry point sport, you know? Yep. Uh, maybe it'll inspire somebody else that wants to come in and, hey, for a million dollars this year, I could build the best paintball team in the world. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, if you got that kind of flow, why not? <clears throat> Um, for sure. So I, I'm excited about it more than not. I see I see all the, the negativity around it too, and I understand those conversations as well, but... Um, I'm just not on that side of the fence. I think this is yeah. good for the sport. I think it's exciting. I mean, shoot, if ESPN or somebody gets wind that these players are making 100 grand a year, they might want to do a story about them. You know, yeah. you never know. I think it was great what Mal said on uh, Marquis' podcast when he was talking about how, you know, he hopes that players like us that put in all this time and work and energy into the sport, like that one day we can get paid that kind of money, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think it's huge. And I, I think that those guys going to the Latin saints and getting paid that kind of money is uh, almost was a service to the other players, even though like, you know, the guys on impact or they don't like that kind of, you know, they're not going to like getting picked apart and um, other teams losing good players. It's, it sucks for them. But I think, you know, from my, from my point of view, I mean, I think that they did a good, you know, you know, a service to the league helps other players in, in the future as well. I and mean, it's, it's just a good thing. I think. Yeah, now there's, you know, there's an eight-year-old kid out there or a nine-year-old kid who who just saw all this stuff go down in the offseason is like telling his mom and dad, mom, dad, this player right here, you know, is getting this and that or whatever the story is. And and now mom and dad are interested like, hey, little Timmy's thinking about playing paintball. He's got, you know, he's got a future in this and it just drives the wheel. And, And that's what we need. We need to make sure that the paintball wheel is being driven forward. And that we got some gusto behind it so that kids want to keep playing paintball. That's, you know, and I know when I was 10 years old, I saw um, Ollie doing his thing and I saw other players doing their thing. And that drove the wheel for me, made me really want to invest myself into this game and be one of those players someday and try to, you know, take this game as far as we possibly can 
um, and keep it going for for my children, you know, and for all the kids out there coming up in the game. For sure. Yo, shout out to little Timmy. Be on the lookout for Todd Martinez in his new league, by the way. We got to yeah. get Tizzle on. That is so dope. <laughs> the uh, Youth Paintball League. Uh, That's little league, close to Little me. League Paintball. Is mm-hmm. it? It's a, is it the URPL? Mm-hmm. Is that what they call it? That I think? To- yeah, that Todd just did. Is <clears throat> yeah. No, I don't think it's the URPL. That's a uh, that's been around for a while, right? Yeah, I think maybe unless they changed the name or they started something new, but I think Todd was just out here because because Pat McKenna is involved with that. He used to be our coach. Um, URPL, you're right. Yep. Mm-hmm. URPL yeah, so, Little League Paintball. Yep. So that's that goes down um, that at Paintball Central. Um, which is the Greenville location, you know, probably an hour and a half from where I am. And um, Pat McKinney is out there coaching those dudes. And I think it's really good for the sport. So, yeah, yeah. dude, that's amazing. It's awesome. I know Hinman has been talking about it for a while, uh, having some sort of youth league, because when we were growing up, we all had that, you know, there was young guns, things like that. You don't see it as much anymore. So um, I would love to get Todd on or, or whoever on that's responsible and talk about uh, that league, see if there's anything we could do to help. That's amazing. Hit up Pat McKenna. He's probably got a lot to talk about with coach. Had he coached damage us, um, runs that league. So he's, he'd, he'd be a good one. Yeah. I actually awesome. have Pat on my list. I spoke to him, um, when we were training for world cup about coming on. So we definitely got to get Pat on here ASAP chat nice. about that. Cause that is tremendous for the youth. Um, and it could be something that could go nationwide and really help nurture really? that grassroots development of the the younger players getting into tournament paintball um so we can keep that wheel going that's amazing yeah, stuff definitely yeah i was gonna ask um back on the point we were talking about uh the latin saints and all of that mm-hmm. did you guys see anything about the uh there was a post i saw on facebook or something about salary caps and players being locked into teams at a certain point in the in the season what do you guys have any opinion on that I was just curious. I saw that, and yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know that any of it's going into effect, but yeah. um, I do think there may be mm-hmm. something there because you know, like they just stripped the entire mm-hmm. impact. You know, I don't know how how that would work. I'm really not too invested either way, but I know <laughs> that there has been uh, talk about you know making trying to mitigate that possibly. But you know, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I've, yeah. I've put some thought into this, actually, um, because one thing that was initial uh, thought of mine was, oh, my goodness, uh, Bart has kind of been out of paintball since COVID. He wasn't at many of the events. He was finally back in and involved, and he loves that those players. You know, he loves his team. And then one guy can just come in and completely rip apart your organization. What if that was enough to make Bart say, you know, I don't feel like doing this anymore, you know, uh, Zach is, is kind of playing on and off. My other son retired, you know, I'm going to fold up shop. Yeah. And then Latin saints comes in, makes a huge splash. And then at the end of the season decides he wants to leave, you know, he hasn't, he's not, he hasn't been in paintball. You know, I don't know how long Diego is going to want to do this. Right. And shout out to him for offering the opportunity. But mm-hmm. you know, if it was a flash in the pan and we would lose someone like Bart in impact, that would be horrible for the sport. Yeah. Right. Um, in the same breath, I don't think there should be a salary cap because we don't make enough to have a salary cap. You know, let's let's have a base salary yeah. first. How about that? Yeah. Let's have a base <laughs> salary first. Uh, so what I had come to is like, okay, maybe in one offseason, you can't take more than two players from one team. Mm-hmm. You know, may, maybe there's something along those lines, you know, it's like a, uh, you know, I don't know, sportsmanship kind of rule, but, mm-hmm. but yeah. you can't take more than two players from one team just to prevent, um, completely gutting a team like the way they, you know, they got the impact core essentially and yeah. impact is so deep. I mean, they still have, they still have a amazing starting five, you know, yeah. so it's not like they are, uh, in trouble and they actually did a really good job with, uh, picking up Darula and Zupa. Those, they're going to be studs for them. And, and, uh, they're definitely, I think going to have a good season and they Probably just picked even up a little, Axel Axel. Yeah, absolutely. Good pick up. Up Axel got into, it's a great pickup. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I think impact's going to have a phenomenal year and who knows they could, they could definitely have a better season than they did last year. Cause they mm-hmm. underperformed last year. Um, so, you know, we'll see, but again, like, that's a bummer if, if someone comes in and just you know takes five or six of your players that's that's really tough for a team to recover from 
Yeah. And uh, especially when you look at it like AC Dallas, for example, they had to completely rebuild last year. One year later, they're relegated. Yeah. They're no longer even a team. They're now PB Fit. They rebranded the whole organization. So yeah. you go in and like take three or four core guys from a team. And if the next year, their first rebuild year, they get relegated, that's a huge bummer. As, like a, a, as an owner, that makes your investment, your investment's not protected at all. You know, like there's no protection yeah. on your investment. So now, granted, I mean, investment, it's you're not really getting a return on your dollar anyway. But <laughs> still, like, why would you want to put up all that kind of money if, if the whole thing could just kind of be ripped away from you? You know, a lot of these owners, they do it for pride. They do it for, you know, the love of the game. They, I think it'd be sweet. If I, if I could afford it, I would want to own a professional paintball team. That'd be so sick. Yeah. You know, because the sport I care about, I think I could do a good job of like trying to manage and, you know, put the right people in place and, and build up an organization. I think that'd be so dope. Yeah. Um, and so if I had the money, I wouldn't care if I was making money off of it. I'll spend the money on this. It's what I want to do. Um, so we want those guys around and we want them to, to be somewhat protected, but at the same yeah. time, like a salary cap doesn't make sense when we don't even have a base salary, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can't prevent, I don't think it's good to prevent a pro player from, from, you know, being able to make money. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. You know, that's a good starting point, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start let's start with the, with the <laughs> and then, uh, and then to couple that, I think that, yeah, if you did two or three max, you know, it's where two, three players can move. Um, that would be palatable, you know, and then, and then everybody can make shifts off of that and start to yeah. decide how they'll navigate, but that's definitely more palatable. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a happy medium there. I don't mm -hmm. know. Chris, what do you think? I feel like with, uh, the money that is kind of being thrown around right now, that if, if we could just get a couple people on the outside of the sport to see what's going on, it's going to be huge. But I feel like we almost need some something within that system of, of people not just getting paid, but maybe having legitimate contracts that they're actually signing to. And maybe those contracts being on site with the league or something like that, that can be reviewed. Uh, kind of like how the NFL has, uh, you know, you could see everybody's contract. So I don't know. I, I feel like it's, there's got to maybe something that could, instead of just money being, I mean, we, we heard that mouse might've gave up some money so that, um, J rap could come on the team or, or, you know, which, whichever player that was, they got, uh, Kyle or yeah, for Kyle. Sorry. Um, it's like if we had this actually spelled out at some, somewhere that just made it more legitimate in terms of like, okay, these are the, these are the salaries these people are getting paid. Um, uh, somewhere that everybody can just look and see that stuff. I know that some people like to keep it private, obviously. No, um, I'm with you, dude. Making that stuff public is like the first step. Yeah. You know, no one knows how much the pros make. What the hell? Mm -hmm. You know, just, no other sports like that. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. Like if I want to go to school to be a lawyer, I want to know how much a lawyer is going to make. Like when I yeah. get, when I, when I uh, go through all the steps and, you know, accrue this amount of debt, what is my potential return? Like what's the average at least? Can we yeah. at least get that? You know, we don't have that for paintball. Yeah. You know, you want to be a doctor, you know what the average is going to be. If you want to, Whatever it is, like you know what what you are gonna get out of it or could get out of it. Yep. I wanna be able to look on Google what is a professional paintball player's salary and it come up with actually something legitimate. Aside totally. from yeah, it's what I, is I've a, I've Googled it and it's something astro it's like ridiculous. Yes. I'm pretty sure yeah. it showed like millions of dollars or something. I'm like, well, I, I think I remember seeing that it showed Ryan oh yeah, the highest salary for a paintball referee in the United States is seventy four thousand per year. I don't think that's true. <laughs> Dang, that's, that's wild. <laughs> that's wild, bro. They've been running a racket. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, hey, that's why paintball surgeon, huh? There yeah, we go. This is hilarious. Hold on a second. Let me click on this. What is this from? I'm telling you, I was looking at this the other day, and it's it was crazy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> according to Simple Hired... I don't know what that is. It sounds official though. Professional paintball player salaries depend largely on location as well as on experience. In 2011 in California, a professional player was able to make as much as 65,000 a year. In New York, a player made only 46,000 a year. Huh, that's interesting. That's such a weird cuz 
Yeah, it's super weird. So they don't even have Oliver's Oliver's on here. The highest salary for a paintball referee in the United States is seventy four thousand three hundred and sixty four dollars <laughs> per year. The all the ref, salary, all the referees, paintball. they're like, <laughs> "Where's that at?" Yeah. Dude, maybe they've they're been doing it this whole time, man. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they have. This is why they keep coming back. Oh, Dang, man. that's where the prizes are. Yeah. How do I join <laughs> NXL? This is also on here. This is crazy. <clears throat> yeah, this is kind of cool. Well, at least when people Google what I do, they don't think it's totally stupid if that's what they see. Right. <laughs> at least there's something there. Yeah. Dude, that's um, hilarious. I feel like I have seen, like, I think it had shown, let's see. Maybe an integration with, like, PB Leagues or something would be something cool. Totally. Oh, we don't need them to be any bigger, do we? I like yeah. PB Leagues, but. Or with you guys. Hey, your new stat stuff. There we go. Shout out to Fantasy Paintball. Let's go. Okay. Yep. Ryan Greenspan's net worth is $10 million. Absolutely. Woo! Big Dude. baller. Yep. Big, Man. big baller Greenspan. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Don't forget the little guys around here, huh? Yeah. What, what Dude, about you? Ryan, how, are, how are they taking care of you, Marsh? You got, it, you got your well, net it's worth? Not, it's not 10 mil, but I'll tell you what, dude. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. <laughs> there um, you go. You know what I got to say with Ryan, man, is he has set the example um, – and, and, you know, it's kind of cool how him and Oliver did it separately, right? Oliver was the, he got paid just to play and be who he was out there. He, he like demanded so much on the field uh, respect that I wanted to pay him a hundred grand per year for five years. And I want to make that clear because I know people like I, when all the Latin Saint stuff was going down, someone said that Marcelo said it was a hundred grand over five years. And I've definitely never said that it was a hundred grand per year for five years. Um, so $500,000 contract to play paintball. Now he had some stuff that he had to do at die and like clinics and, and things like that, that he was still getting paid for, you know, extra. Um, anyway, it's neither here nor there, but Ryan has set the example of, look, if you don't get a big salary from your team, you can go and still make a lot of money playing paintball and like teaching paintball and creating different business opportunities for yourself within the sport. You know, he, <clears throat> he is, you know, he, is a business major and he's treated it as such and uh, done a great job of, of being that pillar, right? Which is important for the sport. It's important for players to, to, uh, to really understand how you can monetize this game. You know, there's so many different ways to monetize uh, being good at paintball, just like yeah. there is, you know, being good at anything, whether, you know, cornhole. cornhole. Yeah. How much do they make? What's the average, average? Uh, they probably crush it. I bet. What's the, well, can we trust this? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. No, let's see. Chris, why did you choose Whoa. the number number thirty three? I gotta know where the number. Uh, so where it's two things actually. It's a combination of uh, unfortunately, last year prior, uh, just a couple weeks before the first event, I unfortunately lost my dad. Oh my god! Um, I'm sorry to hear that. It, no, it's, I'm it's sorry, you know yeah. I appreciate it. Um, so one of the one of the threes is for uh my dad. It's yeah. his birthday. Um, and then the other three is actually for my girlfriend's brother who had passed away as well. So I just put the numbers together. Um, Man. Wow. Yeah. It's powerful. But, uh, well, yeah. Our my, heart, uh, yeah. God, I'm so sorry to hear that, man. And our heart goes out to, to I appreciate you it. your loved ones. Um, Thank you. I know that's not easy, dude. It's tough, but it, yeah. going into that season, it was, you know, last, I feel like this huge drive behind how I played last year and, and just sure. wanting to win for him, you know, yeah, going out there and just giving it all I had. Dude. That's what it was. And Definitely they're all, always that, here, brother. always watching, yep. dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, 33 I chose because of my dad as well. Really? Long That's time awesome. ago, you know, but yeah. uh, 33 was his favorite number. Um, and I've learned more recently that it's one of the master numbers. 11, 22, and 33 are super powerful numbers. We just had this whole conversation on the show with Nick Laval. I don't know if yep. you had a chance to listen to that one. but uh, That was a great um, one. Yeah, fascinating. Dude, Nick is so much fun to talk to. Anytime <clears throat> mm -hmm. we, can, we can sit down and hang out with Nick, it's a blast. The, the PTG community loves it. Yeah. Um, but was, uh, yeah, go ahead. I was actually not – I didn't know too much about numbers, actually, until I listened to the one podcast that you guys had with Zupa. And that made me mm. kind of interested. And I started, I started researching more and more into it. And it was really, you know, just fascinating. Nice. Um, I'd always been more yeah. into uh, like personality testing, Enneagrams, uh, astrology, that type of stuff has mm. always kind of fascinated me. The Enneagram thing, if you guys haven't done that, it's, it's, I, I have, yeah. 
it's it's like spot on to uh to my personality Mm -hmm. i think it's cool yeah i've i've i have i've done uh the enneagram and then there's another one what's the other like major one uh i can't remember i know what you're talking about i'm sure if i heard yeah i have yeah, I, I've done quite a few of those. They are. They're super fascinating. They can definitely get pretty close. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But there's also, I know, like when I was going through and I'm answering a lot of the questions, I'm like, there's too much nuance to like, this is not a good indicator because you're not yeah. getting the nuance of things. And I think there's been there's been some a, a lot of studies to kind of debunk them. But that's how everything is right there. You, you get studies on this side, studies on that side. And then <laughs> what do yeah. you actually believe? Um I think I just got one that I was like, no, this is BS. This isn't, this isn't me. And so I tried to find yeah. every way to disprove it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I know a lot of companies hire uh, employees and they, they make yeah. them take personality tests, which is interesting. Totally. Yeah. Well, but there. there's been a lot of pushback on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, absolutely. It, it, it was like a staple um, in a lot of hiring processes. And I think, and maybe I could be, Maybe I could be wrong. It's been probably two or three years since I dove down this rabbit hole on this stuff. But I think that a lot of those companies started getting a lot of pushback and they don't do it anymore. I could be wrong. Probably. I could be I wrong. I see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause dang it, I'm trying to think of leveraging their decision making off of like some yeah. amb- ambiguity that could. It, it, it is. Yeah. It's like there discriminating is. personality mm-hmm. traits or yeah. something along with that. <laughs> yeah. Kind That's of. a whole different conversation. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I mean, shoot, if it's a bad personality trait, is, is it, mm-hmm. you know, like, are you wrong for discriminating? Yeah, there's um, there is some truth to, you know, the times in which people are born and the tendencies in which they tend to act. Like if you are born in a particular month, you do. I mean, if you really think about it, you kind of got some of those tendencies, you know, it's yeah. like um, there's there is a kernel of knowledge, but you can't base an entire person off of those kinds of things because you know there's so many layers to to the human experience mm. and how we are going to be acting in a workspace or in in sports or whatever but there is definitely a kernel there there's something to it you know with the timing of when you're born and and how it lines up to you know the gist of mm-hmm. your personality mm-hmm. a little bit yeah the totally one i was talking agree. about was mm-hmm. the myers briggs indicator that's it yep, yeah yep. that's the one um, and hmm. that's the one that I know was used a lot for, for hiring. And I think, uh, there was pushback on it, but I yeah. don't know, I'd have to open up that wormhole again. <laughs> yeah. hmm. <clears throat> Chris, how did you, how did you start playing paintball? Where, where did your paintball journey start? It was a birthday party. Birthday. Very boring, <laughs> boring for the show, but, uh, <laughs> no, Dude, I, I we, lived love, in... <laughs> we love the birthday party. Are you kidding me? It's one of the best. Oh yeah. So I lived in a neighborhood that was just packed full of kids. So into my school. And uh, we had a ton of woods back behind all the houses and we would go back there and we would build up uh, all these, you know, woods course bunkers and stuff back there. We would, we would have our, uh, what kind of guns were they back there? Like Triton Walmart guns that we would shoot at each other. And uh, it was just super fun. Um, so we, so one of the kids in the neighborhood had a birthday party. I went, played paintball and I got hooked, but it was more of like just hooked to play around the neighborhood and, and, you know, did that for a little bit. And then I don't know what it was. I went and played at paintball central where they had, you know, the airball bunkers and it was like immediately hooked from that point. Um, I wasn't super fascinated with the woods, but it's kind of grown on me now that I play the ICC and, and the 10 man stuff. So I'm, dude, I love it. <laughs> it's, it's so much it's really fun. fun. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I was actually talking, it was so funny. I was talking to uh Benny Carroll the other day about it, people like back in the day when we would go play paintball or, or anything in your neighborhood where you have all these kids that you'd play with, it was like, you could go play football in like the front of somebody's yard and they wouldn't care. And like, totally. now that I, th- <laughs> I think back to it, it's like, I feel like you'd get shot these days or something crazy would happen. It's like, oh, yeah. people aren't the same as, <laughs> as it used to be. You just, that's why we know. have gel strike, get yourself exactly. a, a gel striker. And, and those <laughs> things are amazing. Like me and my kids, we legitimately, run around we have like these bushes we use for bunkers and they don't shoot that far so you can still get the same rush and do it in like a safe way now which is really cool oh yeah yeah it's fun shout out to because those woods that we were playing and they had to be somebody's property it's like (laughs) no one cared (laughs) yeah you guys are just straight blatantly trespassing out there running around shooting paintballs (laughs) how's the times back then 
Yeah, I know. How old are you? I'm 30. 30. Dude, yep. dirty 30. When when is your nice, birthday? Dude. Dirty 30, May 27th. May 27th. Ooh, we, got a, we got a Gemini. Uh-huh. There yeah. we go. That's I'm, the three of us right here. I'm on the wow. cusp. Yeah, I'm Taurus. I'm May 17th, so I'm right prior oh, to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I'm that stubborn same, same. old bull, you know? This, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jim and I get a lot of backlash as well. So, hey, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we like to have fun. That's all there is to See, it. See, that is a, another funny thing like astrology. I'm not super into it because I don't know. To me, a lot of it's not quite proven. But then I see some of the stuff. I'm like, it is so spot on with me, at least. I feel like it usually, is. like, I can tell other Geminis too. When I meet somebody and, and they tell me they're Gemini, I'm like, oh, makes sense, actually. Mm-hmm. It makes total sense. It's kind of funny. Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like my Gemini lines up with my Enneagram number perfectly and that's what was that's why i was kind of like all right i can kind of see it with the with this test yeah so yeah mm. so back to that really quick it's so funny i did google uh the accuracy on myers-briggs test and it's literally every other one one is like uh the myers-briggs indicator is one of the most popular personality tests in the world this company boasts assessment has 90 percent accuracy and then the next one is the myers-briggs provides inconsistent <laughs> inaccurate results theoretically people <laughs> it's hilarious it's just back and forth Wow. Um, so who knows, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there's new, new studies on it, but, um, yeah. either way, uh, I think there's still something telling about them. I mean, you know, they obviously have been used for a long time for a reason, but, uh, um, yeah. what do you, so you were talking about pairing your, uh, astrology to your Zodiac it, sign to your Enneagram, like yeah. number that I got, I, yeah. for some, somehow those two just line up perfectly. The traits mm-hmm. that I have from the, the Enneagram three, I think I am. And then, uh, the Gemini, it's very similar and, and, you know, very Interesting. similar. So Interesting. That's the yeah. reason I kind of was like, mm, the Instagram test could be totally. You know, yeah. Somewhat there. No, there's, there's definitely a kernel to, to most of those things, you know, like it's, like I said, it's not the whole deal, but there's, there's some facets of it. You're like, wow, that speaks fully to my personality and kind of how I, how I am, you know, for yeah. sure. Yeah, definitely. So back to the woods where you're running around oh, having yeah. fun. Uh, not so much fun. You didn't, you didn't like it too much. I'm sorry. What year was this? That was my, so my first tournament ever was 2005. It okay. was a CFOA five man. I played it with like my stepdad and some friends from school. And I swear, you know, in five man, you, you get points for like shooting bodies and then mm-hmm. for keeping bodies alive. And when yeah, I swear totally. to you, I don't think we shot a single person that whole day. <laughs> like we oh, were no. Oh, no. like, I came back that night and I was like, boys, we, we are not good. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but, uh, so, so that was 2005. And, and I think I just rushed way into that. I think I was 13 or 14 <clears throat> when I played that. So the next year, 2006, uh, I played all, I started playing just the young gun three mans at paintball central. And that was where it really started taking off because, you start to meet the kids around the field and we were on the forums mm-hmm. together and like you start to build a little team. Um, we started winning those, uh, fast forward from that year, 2007, I tried out for gridlock. I went through the gridlock camp and you know, trauma gridlock camp. I did. I was actually on the same gridlock team as Spica. Dude, that's crazy. Um, yeah. What? Wow. Mm-hmm. Division three. Um, Dude. my, my first national event was LA open 07. I was, I think 14 years old. I literally had to have like a chaperone or like stewardess fly with me there. I was, you know, <laughs> so young. Um, and we took second. We got three second places in a row. Hold on. Wait, f- the chaperone. Who was this person? <laughs> just some- It was just like, it was like, like a person like my mom called or something. It was oh, like, hey, wow. <laughs> like this, he's so young. He's traveling. He's flying to LA. I don't think he's ever been past like probably like Tennessee or something. Yeah. So, uh, you know, she had just. I don't think it was somebody that had to like actually fly with me. It was somebody that was like a stewardess on the plane or something, um, was there to just kind of watch me. Whoa. So, so we ended up getting for division three, the first three events that I ever played nationally, we got second place. And that was back when there was like, I think there still is like 80 something teams in those divisions. Uh, so kind of straight from the beginning of, of my time playing national tournaments, it was like, we didn't win, but we got deep on Sunday. We played the finals match and, you guys know how that is. It's like, you might not win it, but you still kind of feel like you're right there at it. And it's, it's for one it just makes you, you know, want it even more, but also you're close to that feeling of winning, I guess. If, if you kind of understand what I'm saying, 
So from a young age, that, for me, that was awesome to, to experience. And I think it really helped my game, you know, moving forward from that point. Mm. Yeah, you got to learn that. That's that's a huge one to learn how to yeah. win, you know, how to get in, yeah. the, in the fight for the top there. Mm -hmm. um, after that season, <clears throat> gridlock and trauma broke up. That was really sad. Yeah, that uh, was such a good, such a cool, you know, organization, all those guys. Um, from that point, I kind of, I jumped around because I was still really young. I, I was in high school and maybe late middle school into high school. Um, so once that organization broke up, it was tough for the kids around our area to kind of play national tournaments because there wasn't any organizations really around. So I was from like 2008 until about 2000 late 2011 i was just kind of on throw together teams playing it playing throughout the ranks like i was in d3 then i went to d2 kind of just in that range like play d2 throw together teams or you know teams that i could guest on because it was hard to you know as a kid to make money to travel to these places because there wasn't an organization close to us uh, so i, I kind of just hopped around to different teams and then finally i was playing i think it was 2012 or 2000 the, i think it was it's 2012 um, Phoenix Open. Uh, I was playing with a team, third together team again, and Heyman, he was like, hey, we want to come watch you. He was already on Top Gun. So they came to watch me, and next thing you know, I'm on Top Gun, uh, the next event playing D1. Mm -hmm. I played all the 2012 season with Top Gun, and we ended up winning World Cup in semi-pro, and we won the series, which put us into pro that next year, 2013. I played pro... <clears throat> with Top Gun until that team relegated and disbanded, I think three years later. We went through the whole Champs and Challengers stuff up and down once or twice and um, eventually just kind of disbanded out once we got relegated. Um, so that's kind of my history up to, you know, when I went pro, that would have been 2013 for the first time. So, so you're coming up on 10 years here. 10 years, but you know, some, some years I didn't play Yeah, just f for different reasons, but, um, yeah, I guess it would be, that's insane. Yeah. That's Take wild, man. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny too, though. And, and, you know, again, forgive me, uh, I've seen you at <clears throat> events, you know, over the years, but this last year you were on everyone's radar, like in, in a way you haven't been before. And, and I'm trying to make the point of like these quote unquote overnight success stories. Mm -hmm. It appears as if that's the case for you. The mm -hmm. new kid on Revo, all of a sudden, just stunting down the Dorito side. Where the hell did this guy come from? You've been mm -hmm. chopping at the bit here for, like Tyler said, almost 10 years on and off in the pro division, out of the pro division, like yeah. busting your butt, working hard, staying consistent, not taking no for an answer, and then finally starting to see some of that success. But it didn't come right away. And the reason no. that's so important to, to uh, uh, explain is because, again, I work with a lot of players that are coming up a lot of the the youth and like they want this this success immediately they're they're like they have no patience for it you yeah. know they they turn pro and and like things don't go their way the first year and so they're like oh i got to do something else like yeah. no stick with what you are in love with do what you love and and stay consistent and eventually you're going to get to the point where you want to be but people just quit too soon yep and it's sad too because i see some kids at the field sometimes that i'm like man, this kid is like 12 years old. His form is already really good. Mm -hmm. he, he wears everything properly. He looks great as a player. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just hope something doesn't happen in his life, you totally. know, five, six years down the road or, you know, three years from that point And just, you know, that he de derails him off that path and he goes and plays lacrosse or something. And it's like, dude, you could be so good. You just don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I started, I feel like also myself, I'm, I'm more of kind of like a more reserved kind of person. I guess I don't, you know, not super loud and, and, and whatnot, but, um, uh Oh, you guys there thought I lost you for a second. Yeah. Shoot. We lost you for a sec. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of more of like a quiet reserved kind of guy, never been super loud on the field or, or whatnot. Um, but I remember my first year pro actually, it was, uh, it was L what event was Riverside Riverside event when they still had, I think it was paintball access. And remember they were doing, the kill count event leaders <clears throat> the for that event was my third event pro it was it was when they put the stats up for the kill count kill count event leaders for 
prelims. And it was me, Fedorov, uh, Damian Ryan. You and Fedorov, Brad bro. McCurley. You guys really have something special. So like back then I was, <laughs> you know, I started to kind of, you know, people started to kind of notice me a little bit at that point. Um, but mm-hmm. still it, from, you know, things happen, you know, Top Gun disbands, what happens to Chris, you know? Mm-hmm. I kept working for it, right? I kept going to other teams and, and just continue to shoot my shot or, you know, never stop practicing. Um, you know, things happen and you just got to come back from it. Well, what what drives you to be as passionate you are <laughs> as you are for this game of paintball? Like, what's your driving force of passion in paintball? Yeah, I just love the game. It's so it's such a fascinating sport to me. Um, that feeling that you get. It's so it's so funny. Um uh, we get in that flow state and I know you guys have been in that many times and, and to where you're just playing nonstop, nonstop, but, and you're not thinking about your actions and you're just kind of going through with, with your movements. But it's funny. You can even be playing at like just your local field, having fun or, or doing whatever, not, you know, not taking something so serious. And you know that you're not in that flow state, but once you put the mask on, it's, it's like, you know, you're not in the flow state, but there's some kind of other feeling that you just kind of escape from reality even though you know you're not kind of you it's it's so it's so tough to explain but there's some, there's something else there that's quite not the flow state but it's still something it's your different alter ego than, the mask is it's, on it's it's weird you're 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 getting into character you know yeah it's lights camera action baby <clears throat> so i love that i mean it's an, it's an escape from you know all the bullshit that we have to go through day to day and um mm-hmm. you know it's just such a cool game and i love playing with you know all the dudes on my team and uh making friends and traveling and, and, you know, just, just nothing like it. It's awesome. That is the truest. That is the truest. And, yeah. uh, speaking of the madness that ensues, we're going to hop into the discord cause it is lit and they want to talk oh, to you. Man. Uh, we got, <laughs> we got some of the, uh, guest questions from the PTG discord chat room. And, um, there's quite a few Maggie <clears throat> shout out to Maggie. She actually is wondering what's one of the more ridiculous cases that you've had to deal with. Um, and any related to paintball, she's actually an attorney as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shout out to the attorneys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no paintball cases. That would be cool though. Um, let me think here. I've had so many just wild stuff. Um, yeah, we'll keep it PG. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, let it fly, dude. Let yeah. it rip. Let, if, uh, if, if you had a case, let's go. <laughs> um, let me think here. I mean, I've had some, I've had, uh, immigrants that I represent a lot of, uh, immigrants under for immigration law and I'll have ones that will come here and they're, you know, they've been stabbed in the, in the back with an eight inch knife escaping from their country and, oh my God. um, you know, escaping persecution and they're here seeking asylum. And, you know, that's just some of the stuff, um, mm. I heavy a lot stuff. Of, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Really heavy stuff like that. Um, what else could it be? I'm sure you I deal hate- with it all, man. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of stuff, really bad car accidents and, and things like that. Nothing too great. You know, yeah. Nothing that's so such a funny story or anything like that. Uh, yeah. A lot of stuff that's kind of touchy-feely, well, I guess. For sure. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we definitely um, know that that's not an easy line of work that you're in there. Yeah. But yeah. you do get some cool stuff, too. You know, mm-hmm. speeding tickets. <laughs> speeding tickets are fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy stuff nice. on that one. I can I can speed now. I can handle my own stuff. So, jeez, dude. <laughs> I show nah. we have to bleep that out. No, no, no. All right, from <clears throat> the video, how has becoming one of the best Rito players in the league caused you to look at your own game and make improvements? And what tips do you have for Dorito players making their way through the divisional ranks? Uh, that goes back to kind of what we were saying uh, earlier in the podcast regarding efficiency, understanding, you know, rewatching film. I watch film all the time. I'm a super big paintball nerd. I, I mean, constantly you could, anyone could ask my girlfriend, she, she doesn't hate it, but she's always like, all right, come on. Like, you know, constantly watching film. Um, you know, I, I get on to go sports and, and rewatch our matches, all of that stuff. And just seeing where we made mistakes. Um, even if I'm not, even if I'm not watching myself, I could be watching somebody else. Um, I would say, what was the second part of that question? It was uh, advice you have for Dorito players making their way through the divisional ranks. And real quick, I want to say on that, the magic number is five, I think. 
for me, at least five. What you mean? Wat- watching a match, one of our oh, own yeah. matches, five times is where I like really feel like I finally got the totality of it and saw enough to to feel comfortable with moving on. Yep, I agree. I I try to watch them, you know, kind of multiple times to see what's going on and how I can improve. Uh, on the second part of this question, I would say that be unique in your game, right? Uh, be yourself because, you know, it's always great. You can always look in and uh, emulate your game off of another player. Or, you know, let's say when I was coming up in the game, I loved Chad Boussier. I loved the way that he played the Drito side. I loved You play Federoff. like him too. Yeah, I loved the way that Fedorov yeah. played the game. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're not that person. You still want to be yourself. Um, and I think that if you're yourself, you have your own unique qualities uh, that will be looked at. You know, there's a lot of a lot of players will say I have certain unique qualities. Like Zupo would always say, the way that you would snap back in your bunker looks like you got shot, but you didn't. You know, there's certain little things that you might do that even if you try to emulate somebody or take little pieces from their game, don't don't forget that you know that you were just you. So that's what's what I would your say. unique quality for attacking down the Dorito side that separates you from the other top pros. I would say my, I've kind of have like a smoother style game. Um, Being quicker than the other person, making quicker decisions, trying to, you know, are you asking about physical or kind of mental side of the game? Yeah. You're the one that said you need to have a uniqueness. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Zupa would always say that I have like a certain style when when snap shooting, um, coming back into my bunker somehow. He said he said it always looked like I was like super close to getting shot, but somehow you just dodge you the bullet last last second. Yeah, I don't know something like okay. that. You know, you maybe elusive. a unique ability to elusive. elusive. Ryan yeah. does that. Ryan does that. There's yeah. so many times at practice you think you shoot him, and they're like the way he reacts to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he's just cheating us out there. Who knows. <laughs> So that was, uh, that's tremendous that's, advice, though, yeah, on, totally. on answering that question. I think that you just absolutely hit that on the head. Um, one of the Papa Sash, he wants to know, what is a Revo? Ooh, uh, I think it's actually Revolution. There we go. That's what uh, I thought. I've never actually even asked that question. <laughs> I need to, I'm going to have to phone Henry in on this one for that. <laughs> I think I've, Henry said it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, he yep. also wants to know when Revo is changing their name to 187 Crew. Ooh, that's a, <laughs> we can't we can't backtrack. That's already happened. Yeah, I think it costs like ten grand to do too. Yeah, yeah, Henry's um, not putting up that money. <clears throat> how uh, we got Shaka? How did the scrimmages go with Crisis and NRG? It was great. You know, it was a good time. We got to uh, mix in some of the new guys we have and see how they're playing and start getting them in the mix. Um, you know, we also had some great times off the field. We went out and had some good dinners and um, got to hang out. And I personally, I'd never, uh, I'd never met Rob Velez before, but he's an awesome dude. Um, I might have yeah. met him, you know, at tournaments, but never personally. Um, yeah. You know, I've known Benny, uh, Mark, I've, I've known a little bit, but, you know, just getting to know everybody and um, the other teams played great as well. So, hell yeah. And from our very own young Stevie, he has a great question. Uh, he says, Chris, first of all, thank you for doing PTG. Playing for Revo and trying to break through in the pro ranks must have been tough. Revo is a team known for grinding their OG five players. What did you do to help you stand out at practice and find your way into that starting lineup? Uh, I just went as hard as I could. I gave it all I could at practice, and I think it got noticed. Um, and also, I came in... Uh, first practice that they invited me up there we play one-on-ones and i beat everyone on the team oh nice <laughs> there you go that's how you do it <laughs> not uh no I, I was just i was saying that because henry always laughs at it but uh i did I, we did we started playing one-on-ones and I, I beat every single person on the team and i think they realized right away oh wow chris has been working hard he wants to he, you know he's here to he's here to play and um you know i kind of got some extra shine when frank got hurt unfortunately just because i didn't want to see him get hurt but he was also playing that side and, um, you know, that sure. gave me yeah. more time to, to yeah. shine and, um, to step up. So the, the second part to that question is what is your diet like at NXL events? At events, um, it's a little bit harder to eat 
as healthy at events, obviously, because you're away from home. You know, we like a lot of Chipotle or um, Cava or, you know, things that aren't just nasty, greasy. You know, if we're in Chicago, definitely get some pizza. There we go. <laughs> nice. Cava, what's of, Cava? Uh, Cava's like a more healthy version of Chipotle. It's more oh. Mediterranean style. Awesome. Good. Never heard of it. Yeah. Oh, also to LMNT, I uh, I drink these like salt packets. It's literally like 250 milligrams of salt now, so it helps. Yeah. That's a good little hack there. You definitely, after that uh, experience that you had with the lack of sodium, you're never playing that game again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got Dorfster. Um, he's wondering what you plan on doing to continue your ascension amongst the pros fa- and also favorite drill um, to work on and do from home during the week. You might have some insight on that. Ooh, some home drills. <laughs> yeah. Or like a workout, uh, something that you do from home. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do to stay, you know, at, at the top of the game and, and where I'm at right now would be, uh, I'm going to continue to work harder than I have before. I think that right now I'm in, I'm in the best shape I've been in. I feel like I'm playing the best I've ever played and I'm going to continue to, you know, just keep that same mentality, uh, going into this year. Um, and I feel like coming off a season like I had last year, I just have a lot more confidence this year as well. So that's, that's huge. Um, other part of that was, was it just at, the at home workout. Yeah. Anything <laughs> that you do at home in between weekends that, um, that keeps you ready to play. Yeah. Um, I love to play Xbox and I keep my, uh, <laughs> there we go. My gun sitting next to me down there and I kind of just throw it back and forth and, you know, yeah. do a little snap shooting in the TV, the black screen and, uh, <laughs> Just, yep. you know, little things like that. Just just kind of keeping the gun around so that you kind of always have it attached to you. Mm-hmm. I think it's big. It's huge. It's it is. Huge. Yeah, I got mine yeah. all set up, and I'm always yeah. throwing it around. We got the Snapshot VR. Shout out to the PTG squad uh, in the Discord, on the Snapshot, playing games. Shout out. We've been having some fun in there. You got to get the Oculus and hop in there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I feel yeah. like the, uh, your gun, if, you, if I, like, leave it in the car for, like, a day or two, I'm like, whoa, something yeah. doesn't feel right. Lonely. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not in my, if it's not in my room. So, yeah. Yeah. Dude, perfect. Got to get in there. All right. Well, my last question from the discord is from BJ Manies. I think he's from your area. He goes, what's it like trying to balance being a lawyer and a pro player? And how much fun do you have running points with uh, us divisional guys at PBC on the weekends? Hashtag PBC fam. There we go. There we go. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Local guy. Um, mm-hmm. It's for me, I feel like it would be much harder if I didn't own my own, uh, if I didn't have my own practice, because, you know, now I have some people that support me, I can kind of make up my own rules and, and whatnot. Uh, so it makes it easy for my, for myself, but you know, that was something that I had to work for and, um, something that I had to create for myself, which wasn't easy. And, you know, now it's time that I can really focus on my game because I've, I've been able to do that. Um, and playing points with the guys at PBC. I love all the guys. I, truly wish and hope that they would just work hard and keep crushing it out there because I, I would love to see them. Um, I know that one of the teams out there is going to be playing the NXL this year for the first time. And awesome. That's awesome. There we I'm go. Excited to watch them play. And, uh, you know, just, just hope everybody keeps coming out. The weather's about to get really nice. So, yeah. Shout out to BJ. He actually sent my son some cards. <clears throat> what a guy, dude. Um, thank that's you so awesome. much. Yeah. He's the man. Shout out BJ. BJ, let's go. All right, we got uh, Bortega0073. What differences in pressure do you feel when making moves in the Dorito side from divisional to professional? And what are some uh, things that front players can work on to kind of navigate that? Uh, I would say the difference, and I guess that's kind of what that question was pertaining to, the difference between making moves in divisional and, and pro. I mean, in pro, it truly is about the inches. I mean, everything about it. Like we were saying earlier in the show, um, how Fedorov is so good at when he leaves his his spot and he throws a couple balls at you, that, that paint is is coming at you very accurately, right? Um, being able to do that allows him to make those moves, you know, like he does. Uh, so I, I would say that definitely if, if, you know, the players in pro are just so elite at, at, at making those shots and, and that's, you know, something that you don't see as much of in divisional um, if any, so, and then what was the last part of that question? Sorry, I'm not the good. Oh, just, um, (laughs) he was just wondering some, 
ways of navigating the you know the difference in pressure from divisional to pro obviously as you go up the ranks it's going to be harder to get down that dorito side some ways that you can navigate that yeah um i would say trusting in the guy behind you you know having a good a good chemistry with uh the guys like for example you know henry on revo he's he's great behind me he's you know i always i don't even have to think about what he's doing because he kind of knows what i have to do right um so kind of building that chemistry with your team and and um having them help you get down the field because you know sometimes it's hard to do it all all on your own team ball yep you know what i mean team ball mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta use all your assets out there for sure and get good at gunfighting too like being able to your i really think what's really important is your first ball accuracy yep. being able to snap out and if you know let's say you need to put somebody in so that you can make a move is working on a drill where you can just put a cone down there beside like the insert bunker and you're in the Dorito one and you snap out. You just try to make sure that your first couple balls are right there because if they are, that guy's going to go in and you could probably make a move quick. So I couldn't agree more with that statement. That's yeah. spot on. Yeah, absolutely. Great advice. Well, shoot, Ty, I'm all out of questions from the Discord. Did you have anything else? Um, no, we do have some golden tickets that we're going to be giving out. Uh, when we go and do our clinic. So be on the lookout for that. Marsh, you want to give them some details on that? Yeah. So the golden tickets are uh, an amazing opportunity for players that have maybe wanted to come to the summer camp in the past, but uh, maybe can't afford it or haven't had the opportunity yet. The Dahl family, uh, major shout out to Chris Dahl and Colton, um, put in a lot of work, but they are choosing to sponsor uh, one lucky player to head to the summer camp. Uh, and pay their entry to the camp. So uh, if you see any of the BKI professors, uh, it'll be, you know, Tyler, myself, Nick Laval, Ryan. Uh, I think Kyle's going to have some too. Um, and if if you, you know, impress us, uh, we're going to give you a ticket. The ticket does not give you uh, automatic admission, but it gives you uh, a chance to submit an essay and, and basically, you know, plead your case as to why you, you deserve the spot. And, uh, we'll be picking one out of, I think we have 20 total tickets. Um, I could be wrong on that number. So don't hold me to that. I think you're correct. I think there is 20. Yeah. Yeah. Quite possibly. But, um, yeah, it's an amazing opportunity. The summer camp is an awesome event. Oh dude. boy. Uh, oh dude. boy. What do we got? BKI. That's what I'm saying. But, uh, also we got the iconic question. I have, a, I have another question for you. Oh, okay. You got the iconic question. There we go. I did. I did. Um, <laughs> nice yes. work, Ty. iconic paintball. How did your time on Top Gun and the Ironman at a young age help prepare you to become the highly skilled pro player you are today? Todd Martinez from the Ironman. Shout out. Tizzle. Shout out to Todd, dude. I mean, cash money. Yeah, I learned. I feel like when I got on the Ironman, anything before that with Top Gun, it was like I was still trying to grow. You know, I was still trying to learn the ropes and <clears throat> super young at that time, trying to, you know, just make my way through the pro ranks with a team that just stepped up. It's tough. But once I got on the Ironman and, and Todd was coaching, it was like, you know, he taught me so much. And, you know, I, I sat there on the Ironman and I, and I just absorbed all that information. Uh, and that, that I think truly is the turning point in my game and my career when it was, you know, I really started to kind of see it in a different way, but I mean, I still am, I'm still growing and I'm still learning. And I feel like last year, honestly, I learned more than I think I've ever learned. I feel like it's just, it's just nonstop. So going to con- just continue. That's right. That's how it's done right there. Ladies and gentlemen. Yep. All right, man, dude, Chris, this has been a pleasure, brother. This was uh, oh, yes. a fantastic episode. Nice to be able to sit down and actually have a conversation with you. Um, you know, been uh, competing against each other for a little bit now. So Great to get to know you. I'm a fan, dude. I'm excited to see what you're going to do with Revo this year. Just hopefully uh, at that first event, we are in your bracket. Um, so hopefully hopefully not too much in that match at least. But all the other ones, good luck. Um, and uh, yeah, man. <laughs> there we go. I know it. I know it. That's a good thing. Um, but yeah, where can everybody keep up with you? I know we, we gave your Instagram a shout out earlier, but if you would like to again and, and any other pages or things you have going on. Yeah, uh, so Instagram, just Chris Shear. Um, and I think I'm Chris Shear on everything else. Um, so super easy. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been a pleasure and uh, love PTG. It's Let's awesome. go, Chris. Oh, yeah, Thank you for coming yeah. on the show, man. We appreciate yeah, it. Sure. Anytime. Shout out 33. Let's go. 33. Let's go. <laughs> I'm in. All right. Peace. peace, guys. All right. Peace, dude. All right, friends. Thank you guys so much, PTG fam, for tuning in. As always, we are so thankful for you guys. If you would like to support the show, please head over to ptgpaintball.com. Click the Patreon link and sign up at any level. You will get access to the Discord. 
If you guys need a website done, Rusty Glaze at Constant Pursuit is your guy. He did all of our stuff. He did my personal website, the PTG website, and is just absolutely dynamite. He is amazing. So if you guys need a website, if you guys have a small business or anything that you uh, can think of that might need a website, ConstantPursuit.com. All right, everybody, as always, we'll see you very soon.